Legends, welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's a lovely, sunshiny day, and you might be thinking, hang on a minute, John, that title is a little bit harsh. I know it's dirty and a bit unloved, uh, but to call it a crime scene, well, that's going a little bit too far. No, I'm not exaggerating. The car is a crime scene, and we'll talk it through in just a moment's time, how it actually is a crime scene, how I've managed to save it, uh, and uh, its history as well. And a quick look around uh, before we end up giving it a big old clean. If you've not seen the video uh, earlier today, um, I went up to the north, to Darlington, and picked up this, this lovely Proton 1.5 uh, GL. It's not a 1.5 actually, it's a 1.3. Getting confused, too many Protons. Um, it's in this grey colour, a bit like my uh, 1.5 SELE and the Black Knight, and uh, it is quite a rare little Iswara. Um, it's the saloon version 1994 on an m reg and you may recognize the car if you are part of the weird car twitter community uh as bill bill the proton uh, m390 oan uh, supplied originally by anglesey motor co in southampton now not actually sure if that's the original number plate on there and the original dealer sticker or if it's one that has been added later whereas it was part exchanged in its life uh, so this video then if you haven't already smash the subscribe button uh, and give it a like before we take a look around and see what is going on so crime scene then yes it is and the reason that i've got the car is because it was getting vandalized up in darlington belonged to um kez uh, before that samantha uh, and uh, chloe if you know samantha and chloe from the weird car twitter community this is bill their proton and um, kez is at university and uh, leaves or left this car on the streets of darlington and um it's getting vandalised, effectively. So this is why it's a crime scene. You can see here, CSI have been and swapped for fingerprints. And Kez has had a little bit of, uh, not bad luck, but a little bit of series of unfortunate events with this Proton being involved in a little bit of a bump on a roundabout, getting it fixed, uh, having the catalytic converter stolen, getting that fixed, and then then getting vandalised uh, with people walking over the car, breaking in and damaging it. So Kez has decided that it needed to go to a, a new home um, and I have taken on the car today. Um, I've driven it home, it's driven 350 odd miles and uh, it didn't miss a beat, I won't lie, it drove wonderfully and is actually one of the best Protons that I've ever driven. So this video then, we'll take a look around in depth, it's going to be a long one and you can see its current condition and the plans that uh, I have got for this car and we'll take a look at the damage um, this side, it's mainly the driver's side and we'll have a look on the interior, engine bay and the boot as well. So it's a bit dirty, it is grubby, it's been under trees and it's been stored uh, under trees and Kez, being at university, hasn't had time to give it a bit of a scrub and that to me actually is something that I'm looking forward to doing, giving it a bit old scrub. There's a, quite a few scratches and dents and bits and pieces on the bonnet um, and you can see that it's had a little bit of love in its life. The bumper doesn't fit overly well due to that crash. Um, and there's this little bit of blemishing on the front bumper here. And it's been repaired with a, with a coach bolt by the looks of things. Straight through uh, into there because it was a broken bracket. Um, and it's had a little bit of a cut and bits and pieces there, but not the end of the world. This wing has been replaced. It's a brand new wing. Um, and Kez's rattle can sprayed it. It needs a little bit of a, a polish up and potentially another coat of clear. And there's some trim missing here uh, from where it needs putting back on where it's been repaired. But I've got that bit of trim and I've got the proton badge as well that's missing. So that's something that I'm gonna be doing. And you can see the difference in the paintwork. You can see all down this side, there's a big ripple. And all down there, there's a big ripple as well. That's where um, there was some damage. So front end collision here, all the way down to this side, missing the passenger door. Looking ahead then, passenger door is good. Um, there's some trim missing here which is where uh, some vandals, as I say, have managed to pull that trim off, uh, breaking all these clips um, in the process and uh, trying to access in here to unlock 
the door and get in. Now there's actually a clip in there that will stop anyone from getting in that side, but it's actually missing on that side, and that's why they've been able to get in. Um, apart from that, it's quite good. It's very solid underneath. All the sills are very good, no rust, no rot. Um, which means that I'm actually going to end up saving this car. I'm not going to uh, break it for spare parts until I have a good look. And if I find something that's terminal, then we might have to re redecide. But at the moment, it's looking very good. Again, grubby all in here and the roof as well. And you can see where someone has put their, I don't know, size 10, size whatever footprint here on the roof where they've walked over the car and it has caused some damage to the bonnet uh, which is a big shame there's a big ding in the bonnet here and it's something that i'm going to try and push out maybe there's another one here that you can see and you can again see people's footprints and it really angers me that somebody has decided that they've obviously got time and inclination to want to damage someone else's car maybe because it was looking a little bit unloved a little bit dirty they thought that it was uh, abandoned and have then taken it upon themselves to be a bad person obviously and break in and do some damage um looking ahead to this side then this wing's all nice and original there's a little bit of a scuff on the wing here that should come out with a little bit of teacup um, and a little bit of rust just at this wing here um this still looking good just the bottom of this wing, a little bit uh, blebby, but everything else looking good. This side, this passenger door as well, there's a little bit of damage crease here where again this trim has been pulled off and the bad people have managed to get their hands in here and then open the door and cause damage. Uh, looking into the back, very nice, dirty again, dusty. And you'll all notice that the original wheel trims are missing. I do have a set of wheel trims, we'll be having a look at those. Um, but the wheel arches, the majority of them very good. They tend to sort of bleb around here, and actually someone's done a little bit of work there. I think Kez may have done a little bit of work uh, there. We've got some more marks and scratches all along this panel, and the back bumper is nice and solid, actually. It's very rare that you get that um, with these. Now, the boot lid, again, has had someone's size 10 on them. Uh, you can see there's a big ding in the boot lid here where something's been dropped on it or sprayed on it. Um, that won't come out, but it's not something that I'm going to be bothered too much about. There's the usual little dints here where someone slammed the boot lid too hard um, and, it, and it's just warped it. As you know from these, they are uh, a little bit uh, tinny. And you, when you look at the back, you'll be able to see that it's been pre-loved by a few people who are fans of the Hubnut. Uh, it's got a Hubnut sticker in the back window here. It's got a Hubnut sticker here. I don't know who this is. I don't I must admit, I've not followed the Hubnut from um, new from his original channel, uh, but I, I don't recognise the car. So if you do recognise the Hubnut car, then uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, but apart from that, looking quite good. As I say, there's a sticker here, I love something. I'm not sure uh, what somebody loved. Uh, could have been horses, could have been protons, could have been anything. Uh, and then this here and here uh, were some comedy badges that I think Kez put on and uh, has removed them. So looking at this panel, looking all good, wheels all good, and uh, the back window, we've got the uh, original dealer sticker there from Southampton. Let's look inside then, we'll start round uh, on the passenger side, because the interior is actually very good condition. Um, so GL, we've got a basic interior, and you can see here all the fingerprint dusting material from the Soco, uh, from the scenes of crime officers that have attended. And that will obviously clean straight off and make a big difference to the car. Same here on this trim, will clean up lovely. Now VHS Chloe knows that I'm mad with her for this <laughs> because she has fitted these aftermarket Pioneer door speakers. They don't look too bad actually. Um, they don't seem to be working so I've got to investigate that. But the interior uh, looking good. All the bits of trim that I've pointed out that's missing is actually in the car. Um, and when the vandals have broken into the car they've done a little bit of damage inside, pulled some bits and pieces off. Uh, I've got that to repair. Let's take a look in the glove box then. Uh, we've got one of the clips in here uh, from the external trim is snapped off i've got loads of these so i can repair that that's not a problem uh, we've got a covid mask fine um we've got not the original floor mats but i have got a set of floor mats and actually under here the carpet's looking very nice um 
bits and pieces like ice scrapers um i'll reuse those i won't throw them in the bin i will reuse those um we've got other stuff under here i don't know how many ice scrapers anyone wants we've got what three ice scrapers all the ice scrapers um and some other bits and pieces of junk in here what's that uh, the firework display 2022 residence parking permit please display on your dashboard always following the rules um yeah things like this this has been ripped out by the vandals and um, it does just clip back in there we go well, that's one job job oh i've put it in upside down hang on a minute there we go that's one job jobbed for the day uh they've basically just been in and been cocking about if that's the actual term that you can use they've caused damage here ripped this apart that'll go in the bin and there's just general tat in the car that obviously i'll be able to get rid of what's this in here nothing exciting in there and a spare bulb of some description in there some sort of led i, I won't be using that um, i'll be putting proper bulbs in um the radio works fine front speakers don't work properly rear speakers do the clock doesn't work either that i've noticed so i'll have to do some uh, investigating in that the, the headlining looking good and one of the good things about this is that it is a non-sunroof model which means that the leaking will not be happening which means that the seats are not getting wet um other stuff that's in here that piece of trim from the front bumper uh, this which has been dusted for fingerprints that's a piece of trim from the steering wheel that's been ripped off i need to repair that because it's been broken but not impossible All right passenger side then let's have a look uh more stuff what's this that's a piece of uh, indicator um i'm guessing that's where it's been previously broken off we'll just be getting rid of that uh that's the ashtray from the rear console let's uh, reinstate that oh we're doing lots of little quick fix jobs uh, is there anything in here oh yeah there is something in there what's that oh it's gone right on the inside let's see if we can get it back out it's a pen from the Holiday Inn. There you go, free advertising for them. Uh, rear bench seats looking good. It's the saloon, they don't fold down. And in the back, we've got, in the back, Pioneer speakers as well. It looks quite good in there. That headlining's very good, actually. I'm very impressed. Uh, coming around then, let's go here to the passenger side. This side, big shout out to Hubnut again. I get my own Coupland Nut, Coupland Classics or something made up. Would you have one of those? Hashtag merchandise. These door trims and door cards looking good, really good in here actually. Um, and these internal areas here looking very good, no signs of rot or rust, which fills me with lots of confidence because they normally go in here and here. It's nice and solid. Um, this is from the door trim, and this uh, is from the ashtray actually. Let's put that back in the ashtray. Ah, I see what's happened. Let's get that, put that back in there. Uh, come on, it's difficult to do one-handed. Have they broken it? Okay, it's been broken actually, so I can't put that back in there, but I do have, I've got loads of these ashtrays, um, so I'll just pop a new one in there. Right, get, get rid of that, that's for the ashtray. Um, let's see, have a look what else is in here. Nothing exciting. Uh, open that door, leave that door open, as we do. And then coming through to the driver's side. A little bit of wear on this side of this seat here. Um, it could probably do with being stitched up. But actually, for a car that's covered 63,000 miles, the, uh, the seat cushions are very good. And I'll obviously give this a clean up and a polish up. But it's looking good. Driver's side then, very nice. Uh, again, this is where that panel has to go in there they actually ripped it out here and broke the screws off uh, the screws in from the back um, I can fix that not a major issue proton badge missing here I've got one in stock and that can go straight on there but apart from that inside there looking all good right let's pop the boot let's pop the bonnet and we'll look at both before we end the video right here's the boot then ah, there's stuff in here what have we got we've got car polish We've got a blueprint 
air filter, maybe? A distributor cap. Is it a, a new distributor cap? Yeah, it looks like it. Looks like a new distributor in there. Uh, happy days. Not sure why that's uh, in there. Uh, we've got these wheel trims, which look vile. They're absolutely horrible. I understand why they're not on the car. We've got a spare light with, oh my goodness, what has somebody done here? Uh, that's a proton light, but not sure what they've done here. They've added some sort of extra bit. Don't like that. Uh, what's in there? Got some stuff in here. Uh, is that a brake hose? Doesn't tell me on here, does it tell me? Brake hose, yeah, it's a brake hose. There's a new brake hose in there. Uh, and I'm guessing that's another one. Thanks. Uh, empty bottle of uh, bottliness. Um, I did have to fill the coolant tank up, so that's probably why that's in there. The radiators may be losing a little bit of water. Car polish. What's under here? I'm guessing I've got a spare wheel. Oh, that's a shame, that's broken. Uh, I've got one of those. Yep, spare wheel, toolkit, jack. Production date, 8th of the 9th, 1993. Lovely, right, that's the boot. And you can see there's loads of cleaning I've got to do, all in here. All these bits of tree and stuff. What do we call it? We called these helicopters when I was a kid. Um, I'll just get the hoover in there, give it a good old hoover. In fact, I might do that before I give it a jet wash off, because I am going to clean it, obviously. It's filth. Um, let's have a look under the bonnet, and then that will end the video. We're looking good. Looking good there so far. Right, under the bonnet. I'll pop the bonnet then. Uh, we're under the bonnet. You can see that the lights need a little bit of a clean and that radiator there is not looking very good. There's quite a lot of corrosion uh, and, and that radiator is gonna need replacing. I've got a few in stock, there's something I'll be doing. Um, battery's looking good, levels looking good. I filled up the coolant tank. Again, all this, all this crud and bits and pieces and rubbish. Um, I'll just hoover out and sweep off before I give it a wash. Coarse grey, that's the colour. It's not a Mallorca black, unlike my others. It's looking quite good under there. Obviously, the 12 valve uh, engine with the ECI multi in there. Airbox looking good as well. 929 Mitsubishi airbox. So it's an early airbox from the Iswara models. Um, I hadn't seen the car before I bought it. Um, I didn't know what it was going to be like. First impressions when I got, got to my location today was, oh my goodness, this is filthy, what am I going to do? Um, the impressions now I've had a good look around it is it's, it's a good usable car and actually driving it home the 350 miles, it was a fantastic drive. It was the best Proton I've ever driven. It didn't miss a beat. Um, I had to pump the tyres up, put some new fuel in it, and away we go. My plan then is to get it nice and clean, get it tidied up, get all that crud and crap off it, and have a look at the actual paperwork uh, of the car, look at its history, look at the paintwork, um, get it all nice and clean, and then see what sort of a base we've got and do some jobs from there. Um, likelihood is, it probably won't stay with me long term, it'll be one that I've rescued to keep on the road um, it might be six months 12 months two years and then moved on to uh, another owner who's gonna love it and enjoy it but for now it's gonna keep me busy uh, out and out of trouble with mrs john cooper till next time then have a great day whatever you're getting up to if you like the video smash subscribe smash like and if you haven't already done so please uh, subscribe to that channel and find me on twitter facebook and instagram as well it's at john Coopland, all one word and uh, hopefully we'll be giving, giving you updates on the car as and when we get it nice and clean. Till next time, have a great day. Goodbye. Legends, welcome back to the channel. John here on a beautiful sunny Lincolnshire day, but the black clouds are rolling in, so we'll do this video quite quick to talk to you about this. Yes, it's a Proton 1.5 SE, and it's one I've just bought, literally, uh, about three or four hours ago today. It's part of a larger collection and there'll be more about that on the channel as time comes by. But long story short, I have just brokered a deal to buy six, yes, six uh, Protons from a private collection. This being the first one then, this is the first one on the channel from that and there will be a separate video uh, when they're all here. Uh, it's a Proton 
1.5 SE then, which is the top spec. It's in this beautiful rainforesty Java green, and it's covered about 40-odd thousand miles. We'll have a look at that in just a moment. Interesting fact, I've known of this car for quite a long time, and I actually saw it uh, as part of a display at the local Boston Classic Car Show in 2013, and the owner who had this prior to the owner I've just bought it from, also was the owner of my Proton 1.5 Black Knight. You know the one, that famous one. This video then, we're gonna take a quick quick look around, uh, have a look at the car as found before any sort of work's done, and then we'll talk about its history, its future, and uh, yeah, just document the car. So it's in this lovely Java green, rainforest green. It is beautiful, it does shine up nice. The car hasn't really had much TLC the past few years, and you can see there's a few rust spots here. We've got one here, here, and it's had a bit of a bump on this uh, bumper here. Interesting, on the K plate, apparently this is a uh, personalised number plate. Uh, is it something that will be going or I'll be keeping? Uh, we'll talk about that as well. Let's go around this way then to the passenger side. Things I've noticed we haven't got, haven't got the original wheel trims. Uh, the SE wheel trim should have been sort of a, a triangle shape. I've got some of those in stock, but they're not in brilliant condition. So uh, at the moment we've just got these bog standard plastic wheel trims and they're a bit naff really. Um, it might be worth just getting rid of those and having steelies. Uh, wheel arch looking good. Um, this has been painted at some point in its life. This uh, this wheel actually you can see that this bumper doesn't fit perfectly either it's had a bit of a knock at some point uh, looking at the sills then all good here bottom of the door could do with a little bit of a clean and a tidy up and a polish but these badges are so shiny and fresh and there's no uh, discoloration to that badge it really is beautiful uh, we've got a little bit of a bump here on the wing mirror um, let's look at here this is one of the main problems is the delamination of the glass here this is the original windscreen and you can see the water has got it and it's started to delaminate which has really uh, let the car down it's gone the same side here as well obviously original wiper arms these are probably the original wiper blades as well uh, as in the blade holders because they've got these screw-ins here we're missing a few decals we'll talk about that at some point we've got lovely color-coded door handles there's a big scrawk down the edge here you can't see it but that's something that I'll be looking at fixing this really lets the car down this is one of the worst parts is uh, this this rust here the wheel arch is tender ie paint flaking but then someone at some point has had a go at touching it up with some paint um, and it's done a bad job I'm gonna try and get some uh, paint stuff on there to try and tidy that up we've got a big ding in the bottom of this door as well clearly someone's opened it onto a curb or onto a pole or something something i'm not going to sort out but apart from that there's no dints in that door or, or that panel at all there's a little bit on this one but looking good uh, we've got a little bit of overspray here i had that on the black knight when i got it i think the owner has done some sort of spraying there coming along to this bumper all good here this is looking nice that bumper's got a wiggle on it as well where someone's knocked it but looking at this this back from this side it's looking really nice and, and, and clean and tidy um we've got not the original number plates i don't think because as i say it's had personalized number plates on there but these badges are so nice they've been well looked after these badges I certainly i won't be getting a pressure washer near this uh, at any point now this this spoiler it's a rubberized spoiler this um, and it's blebbed a little bit and this is one of the worst bits where the paint has started to lift I think I'm going to get some sort of um, not silicon but something on there just to tidy that up just to stop it from spreading any further uh, but you've got these bubbles and these bubbles are what's causing this problem it's rubberized as you say um, and, it's, and it's painted it's almost like the same black rubber that's on the black knight again being knocked on this corner it's really rare to find these where they haven't been knocked um, things I can see at the back here, this trim uh, is missing uh, from the headlining. I'm going to have to try and find one of those. And there's also some trim missing from the seat belt there. We'll have a look at that when we go inside. Uh, this then, this wheel arch is full of crap. What's all this? Just mud and stuff. Uh, that's obviously not going to be helping the situation. and probably It's probably why it's rotting a little bit. So I'll get all that out of there. And we'll uh, have a look at that. Tyres are all right. Rear tyres are good. Um, it's sitting quite low here. Might be a bit of a broken spring. I'll have to have a look at that. Um, but it's blebbed here as well. And uh, it's been touched up. But honestly, a bit of wax oil up there. And you will never uh, 
know the difference and obviously we've got to just tidy that bit up there but I'll put some black wax oil on there and um, it might just tidy that up for a while hands are filthy you can see all that crud in there it's no good right let's take a look at these sills then looking good sill covers are fine to there again same sort of thing no major issues no major dints or dents or knocks um, the roof has got a problem and this is a this is a big issue that probably needs sorting out and addressing is this uh, here on the roof where the sunroof sits it's where water has obviously sat and collected and it's blebbed big problem that could do with uh, probably this coming out and a tidy up and a respray but for somebody that's going to probably enjoy it um not a major issue that looking ahead to this bit then nice again needs a tidy up under here some marks and this is a scuff here that's happened I, that's going to take me two seconds to get out it really is not a big problem at all this is going to look beautiful when it's shined up i really really do know that um a couple of stone chips here that's gone a bit rusty we can get that sorted and then looking ahead to the front here very nice very good condition it's been well looked after uh, in its lifetime let's take a look inside then we'll start again by going around the passenger side uh, there's not much paperwork with this car yet the owner has told me that they are going to fish it out we've got the original proton rubberized floor mats it's so hot in here just going to let that heat out uh, door cards then are brown <laughs> this lovely mint and chocolate combination and being the se we've got some wonderful features such as the door pocket and of course the power windows you need to check that they work this velour here then could do with a blooming good clean uh, it should be this sort of blue and brown mottled effect well this is just brown effect that's going to get a power washer in there uh, i say a power washer you know what i mean like a spot washer and that will get all that off looking inside then uh looking good those vents are good we've got this aftermarket tax disc holder that's going to be coming out uh oh i've got some tax discs excellent oh right okay so it looks like the number plate might have been K11N, or maybe K11N was the original number plate. Ken, I understand why someone's taken that off there now, though. <laughs> Ken and had keep put back on there. Uh, in here, we've got the usual cubby holes and bits and pieces. It's actually got an aftermarket alarm system fitted. Don't think that that fit that works, but we'll have a look at that. And then in here, we've got the cubby hole as well with nothing on, uh, nothing in. That all looks good. That all looks good. It needs a good old clean. It's just dirty, but. It's okay obviously you've got electric mirrors here so the switches are there we'll test all those that looks good needs a blooming good clean but inside actually it's looking really nice and um, the only thing that lets it down that's aftermarket is this speaker thing that someone's sort of drilled on the dash i've got absolutely no idea what that is maybe it's the uh, warning device for the alarm uh, this thing here but we'll, we'll have a look at that as we go around and that is obviously the v5 paperwork for me no service history with the car uh, but again the uh, owner has told me she's going to dig that out for me um what's this this is the carpet for the boot lining for the carpet uh and wow okay we've got uh, an aftermarket and well, it's not aftermarket it's a different color uh, blue wing mirror no idea why that's in here but uh, it's an electric wing mirror great to have a spares spare glass and bits and pieces that's a billy bonus and by the looks of things some spare uh, wiper blades as well winner winner um all good in the back this is this is looking good these are looking nice actually this car is turning out to be a lot better than i first thought let's take a look in the boot because i know that there's um, loads of parts in the boot driver's side looking good pop that boot and then we'll have a look uh, in the bonnet and that'll be the end of the video <laughs> yeah um, these were also included in the sale uh, a mass load of proton parts um, I've actually got in here something really rare like super rare here is a pair of roof bars for a proton and um, they are brilliant and actually there's someone on facebook that wants them so we're I'm gonna let him have those but what have we got we've got some handbrake cables and brake cables and all sorts of stuff in there headlights i'm gonna have to have a look at all this floor mats um but yeah some awesome stuff in the boot there as well uh, and this is nice this is you know a bit dirty but it's not bad it's really not bad actually the more i'm looking at it uh, passenger side at uh, the driver's side passenger driver rear then good we've got floor mats anything in there no nothing in there looking to the 
driver's side then. And the car's covered 47,000 miles. 47,193. It really hasn't uh, really been bedded in. A little bit of a squeak uh, when you pull... Put the, uh, turn it on. It hasn't been used for a little while. This is also nice to see that this badge hasn't gone missing. It's, it's in really good condition, um, apart from needing a, a bit of a clean and that then wheel arches. Right, let's pull this. Oh, uh, we'll open the engine bay and have a look under there. You can see at the moment the situation we're in. Uh, right, I'll just pause this and get this open. And you can see that the engine bay might need a little bit of TLC, if I'm honest. It hasn't been cleaned at some point. Um, there's a little bit of surface rust there, but nothing major. This set uh, block, obviously the Magma 12 valve engine, that's a Mitsubishi engine. You've got the multi-jet injector there. And this is a Lucian Green, uh, the burger paint code. I need to find out what that means. Um, we've got a block of wood holding the battery in. <laughs> Fine. Battery carrier's missing. I've got tons of those. We can put that back in place. Um, and actually, the bonnet here... It's not rusty at all. It's it's really good condition. The more I'm looking at this car, the more I'm thinking actually this would be quite an easy car to tidy up and and be a, a, a good little daily runner and maybe a twelve to fifteen hundred pound car. That's it then for this video. Uh, there will be five other videos and there'll be a few other videos on this car as we start to get it tidied up a little bit. But I just wanted to show you in and around this car um, as I have found it and picked it up today. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. So much Proton content on there. And if you haven't found me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and the TikTok, it's John Coopland, all one word. Until next time, have a great day, whatever you're getting up to. Uh, I hope you've really enjoyed the video. And uh, ta-ra! Legends, welcome back to the channel. I've been told that in this barn in the middle of the Lincolnshire countryside is a treat for me. And obviously that normally would be in the shape of a proton. We're going to go across this field. And of course it is. Uh, we're, uh, I'm gobsmacked, actually, that, that there, is, there, there is a car in this barn. <laughs> uh, and it's a local car as well. Um, I'm born and raised from Boston in Lincolnshire. This car displaying a Cropley's number plate. Horse has come to have a look and say, hang on a minute, what's under there? A proton? I'll bid you for it. Um, as you can see, it's been stood up for quite a while. This car is part of a collection of cars that I have just bought. Uh, this one, the worst one, I won't lie, um, of the whole lot. This is uh, <laughs> it's been stored in this barn for quite a few years. Me brushing off the soil and the hay. And uh, this is a first video of the look at this car. There's going to be some more videos of this car on the channel, but this is as found, this is as we pulled the cover off last week to have a look at this. And I thought, well, a few of you might want to see what it looks like uh, by taking the cover off. And some of you might say, hang on a minute, John, it's an old proton in a barn. Uh, leave it there. Let it rot. But you know me, you know I love my protons. And so I've got to get it out, haven't I? Um, so what's this? Uh, it is a K reg, so ninety two, ninety three. Um, it's in a silver colour. I'm just going to go around the back here to have a look at the model. There's some more bits on there, and you can see just how filthy it is with all this dust. I absolutely cannot wait to get a jet wash around this one and get rid of some of this uh, this muck. We've got the spoiler on the back there, which means it's an SE, and there it is. Yeah, it's a one point five SE. Um, however, I have. We've got some bad news about the car uh, with regards to the engine. You'll see about that in just a moment's time. Have a look inside then. You can see the SE. We've got windy windows. We've got velour trim. And it, it's a bit mucky in there, isn't it? You can see that the spiders have been in. And uh, it needs a little bit of TLC. Uh, also, automatic box on this one. Um, automatic gearbox, which I've never had. I've never had a Proton in automatic. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, what the nuances and what the differences are, and that will be a separate video as well. Somewhere to that bolster, um, the car has actually driven a lot of miles. It's done 198,000, and you can't see that because my phone didn't focus properly, but it's, it's really been used, so it's a 200,000-mile car. And uh, from what I can see, I, I, I might be over-generous or over-exaggerating, but it looks quite solid. It looks a good car under here. Um, so I really genuinely cannot wait to get it out of this barn and have a look. Sunroof model being the SE, of course. Um, we shall see what happens when it's pulled out. And yeah, one thing I was told about is there's no engine. So it is purely 
a body, it is purely a shell. And my plan, my intention, is to use it for spare parts. Um, but actually, it looks quite solid from here. I can't, obviously can't get down this side here to have a look. But um, first impressions of the car when I'm, I'm looking at it is it's nice and solid. There's no rot or rust that I can see front end. And obviously, I've got to be a bit you know, generous because I, I can't see any more of the car. It's a nice little silver colour. The bumper looks good. It looks like it's a nice straight car. And talking to the owner, um, she bought it off a couple locally. Um, it came from Spalding, which is local to Lincolnshire. And they um, sold it due to the fact that it, it had run out of MOT and, and uh, it needed a little bit of work to get it back. So you can see then that it has been butchered underneath. We've still got the you know general gubbins and bits and pieces and, and the paint coats. But no rot under there. That bonnet is not rusty in any way, shape or form. But uh, maybe the fact that we need an automatic gearbox and an, an engine and all sorts of stuff to put this back on the road. I doubt it will be back on the road. But who knows? Time will tell when we get it there. Anyway, I thought you guys might like to see this video. To see the car in its current location at the moment. It's still there. I haven't pulled it out yet uh, at the time of recording and uploading this video. There will obviously be more videos of this car on the channel. And there's loads more Proton content coming within the next sort of month month and a half as i say i've broken a deal to buy six cars in one go this being one of them this in my opinion the worst and all these parts uh, which we're going to go pick up today wednesday uh, if you're watching it today all these parts these are all proton parts an absolute gold mine of parts i'm going to go pick them up today with dad in the trailer if you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please give it a like. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so, so you don't miss any of that Proton content. And until next time, have a great day, whatever you're getting up to. Hope you're well. Um, and uh, genuinely, thank you to everybody who has supported the channel in the past sort of year, year and a half. I cannot wait to start digging through all these parts this afternoon and uh, bring you a video of what we have got, what we have found, and what good is we will be bringing to the channel. Until next time, have a great time, take care, and goodbye. Legends, welcome back to the channel. John here, Crystal's here as well on this gorgeous Lincolnshire morning, and we're taking a look at this. Uh, it is a, excuse me, who are you barking at? Hey! <laughs> the neighbours around about and she's having a having a little bark. Uh, it's this then. It's part of the Proton Six Car Collection that I picked up uh, last week. If you haven't seen the videos for that, they are already on the channel. This is an in-depth look then at this one, which is a 1.5 SL. Uh, as you can see, it's absolutely filthy. It's as bought, and we're going to give it a good old clean today and do a little bit of work around this. But this video is just to document it, have a good look round before we get into any of the nitty gritty. There is a pre-purchase walk around video on the channel if you haven't seen that already. And actually, I've also done a little bit of work to it. I've also fitted a uh, clutch master cylinder so the car will actually run and drive. Uh, we'll start then from this side today, the passenger side, and we'll take a look. It's very difficult to tell. And as I say, I've got to give it a good old scrub to find out what's underneath. But looking at the uh, wing mirror here, all nice there's no major rot or corrosion there there is a bit of rust uh, in this wheel arch i've got to do a little bit of uh, exploration with regards to that but this tire's good uh, the tires were flat when i got it so i have pumped the tires up front bumper's nice and solid and it does stick in here they all do that no idea why um, it's bad design in my opinion um, all the trim is nice here and then looking at this sill it's all good all along that bottom sill. Wing mirror, nice. Is there a scuff on it? There might be a couple of scuffs on there, but we can uh, have a look at that and probably give that a bit of a tidy up. The windscreen is good. Uh, it is, yeah, it's the original windscreen. And we've got an issue with one of the wiper blades. We'll have a look at that when we get round to that side. Uh, door looking good this side. And uh, it does open. We'll have a look in there in a moment's time. Uh, looking at this glass, all good. This is original glass. This is original glass. This is original glass. Sunroof, um, and it's not rotten around the sunroof. They do normally go around the front here and around the back here. This is a later Proton Wabasto sunroof. 
Uh, one I've never seen before, so we'll have a look at that when we look inside. Um, door trim here is starting to fade. They all do that. It's like a painted black. Uh, the, the way forward is going to be to sort of spray that up. But all the trim is there, including these little end tabs. These normally go missing as well from uh, vehicles. So that is there as well. Um, this is where we start to get a little bit concerning. Uh, there's a little bit of a bleb on this wheel arch here. It is purely cosmetic, not structural. However, in here, let's take a look. Yeah, that's nice. All good. Needs a little bit of TLC on this back wheel arch as well. Fuel filler cap is good, no dints. And actually, I can't see any major knocks or dents around the side of this car at all. Looking at this rear trim, you can see that the back bumper has been off at some point in its life. There's a screw here that holds the bumper into place behind this trim, and this trim has been lifted. So it has been removed at some point in its life. We've got the original mud flap. And looking at the back then, um, we've got the original windscreen glass at the back, heated rear screen. You can see it's not been taken out because these clips aren't broken. They break if it's been removed. We've got the original dealer sticker in the back, which is Golden Hill Garage. I actually don't think that's the garage that originally sold the car. Um, the car was for sale 2016 time uh, from Golden Hill Garage, which is a Proton Garage. And they've probably put their dealer sticker in the back there. Right, taking a look at the rear then. Uh, everything is looking good. This side, this garnish and trim is all good. We've got the Proton Inspectors here. Um, original P Ridge Golden Hill Garage number plate and just some grime and bits and pieces on here that will just wash off when we end up washing it. Um, underneath here, looking quite good. That exhaust is okay. It's a little bit crusty but uh, it, it's all right. We've got this badge, which is nice uh, and shiny. It's a later badge, which, is, which means it's got the, the shiny edition. Uh, and then we've got a badge missing. So there are some badges with the car, but this one would be the SL badge that's missing. And I think this is the original sort of um, sticky. So that will, will be easily go back on there. Boot lid is difficult to tell really. Uh, without having a good old scrub, you can see it's obviously been pooling water. Um, it looks pretty solid. Uh, there's no major wibbles in there. And you can see we've got the original rear parcel shelf speakers as well. This parcel shelf looking very good, actually. They normally uh, deteriorate quite quickly. Right, looking ahead then to the driver's side. This back wing looking good. This back bumper looking good. Little bit of rot again there. But nothing major. This back door looking really good. Again, this is all faded. It's something that can just easily be masked off and spray painted in an afternoon. Same here as well. It all fades. You can see the paint just comes off. Um, we've got the aerial here. I'm wondering if it's going to go back in. It is going to go back in. Let's just uh, retract the aerial. You can see it's got all this crud that it's collecting as well. I don't like having aerials like this stuck out. It leads to temptation for people to snap them off. There's a little bit of lifting here on this roof of paint. I would suggest that at some point this roof has probably been painted. Uh, driver's side then. Sill, let's get on my knees again. Little bit of rot uh, at the front under there, but nothing major. All the badges are in place here. Scuff on this wing mirror. But actually, not looking too bad that side. This wing, again, looking good. There's a wiggle here. There's a crunch in this wing. It's been knocked at some point here. Uh, that could probably be easily pushed out. Um, take the wheel liner out and give it a bit of a push. That shouldn't be a major issue. One thing that is missing from the car that you've probably noticed is the wheel trims. Uh, that's a big shame. I'm never going to find a set of blooming wheel trims for this. Um, but we can but hope. <laughs> it might be something that I end up picking up in the future. This wing looking good then. Front bumper all good. Uh, it's not been scuffed. Normally these front bumpers end up being scuffed because the car is a big old thing. Uh, and then this front bonnet... I can't really see the bonnet until I have got it uh, nice and clean. You can see, then it's honest. Uh, there is an issue with this wiper linkage in that the, 
the post here is wibbly. I think it's probably rotted out. Um, I've got some wiper linkages so I can easily replace that. It's removal of this scuttle. And then once you've removed the scuttle, you can get your fingers in there and access it. Um, we'll have a look inside and then we will have a look in the boot and then we'll have a look under the bonnet and that'll be the end of the video but it is a comprehensive tour thank you for staying with it this is lovely wonderful purplish gray color um someone described it as blue the original owner i think it's more lilac um and we've got being the sl not major frills um but some frills look at this look at this beautiful sill in here this kick kick sill that's nice there's a couple of scuffs where someone's got in and out of it but <laughs> they'll tea cut straight off uh looking at this door card then it's very nice it's like a blue white and brown herringbone effect if i zoom in on that that's uh that's quite beautiful actually the door cards aren't too bad we've got the bottom carpet effect as well grab handle and windy windows um, the car has covered quite a few miles. It's done 160,000 miles from new. Um, so considering that, it's in remarkable condition. One thing that does let the car down is this, uh, which is the driver's seat. And you can see that it's definitely had 160 odd thousand miles of wear. That's fine. I'm not going to get angry about that. Um, part of me would probably want to swap that seat over with this. But then why should I then put unnecessary wear on that seat? Um, it is what it is. Can I stitch it up? Yeah, I can probably have a little bit of a needle and thread towards that and stitch it up and there as well. In fact, actually, I'm not very good at that sort of thing, but I'll tell you who is, and that is my mum. So that might be a job for mum at some point later in the year. Uh, we've got original floor mats then, uh, all around the car, I believe, and it's got this lovely grey blue interior in here. There's some dirt to the seats, which shows up better on camera. Um, than in real life actually uh, but the interior itself is very very good we've got the gear knob which is nice there's some tape on the steering wheel here i'm not sure why um it probably started to crack i've got one of these steering wheels i can just replace it it's not an issue um uh, these are interesting these are later seat belts than the uh, ones i'm used to and we've got the usual dash pod here cigarette lighter let's have a look at that uh, it has been used at some point in its life, which is a shame. Um, but the usual switches and dials and everything are in, in good nick. The one thing that is on the dash that I don't like is this glasses clip thing that someone stuck. However, I'm scared that if I take that off, it's probably going to damage the, the dash. Um, this interior light pod is new to me. I've never seen one of these. And this Proton branded... Um, the sunroof is also new to me. In fact, what's that? Is that a sunroof cover? Oh my goodness, I've never seen one of those before. Yeah, that's a cool feature. That's going in the list of little wins of things I've never seen. Awesome. <laughs> right, let's go around to uh, the passenger's side, uh, the driver's side. These seats are a bit mucky. Um, they could do with a bit of a scrub, but once I've hoovered it out, it should be okay. Obviously, we've got this trim at the back here. Where's that from? Just gonna have a feel, see where that trim's from. Yeah, it's the rear trim. It's fell off at the top there. Just take it out of the parcel shelf. No major issue. Uh, a bit of damage to this piece of trim here. There's a hole in it. Got one of these in stock. Can replace it straight away. Now this door card looking good. Uh, let's go around this side. Animals are still having a snuffle about. Uh, right, this is near side rear now. This lets it down big time. Um, there's been some sort of tape placed on this door card and it's deteriorated over time and sort of cracked. Um, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm not even going to attempt to touch it. It does deteriorate. It does detract, sorry, from this door card. But where are you going to find another one of these door cards? You're not. So I'm going to leave that well alone. Um, again, seatbelts in the back here are a bit different to what I'm used to. Anything in these door pockets? No. 
We've got a full set of floor mats though, which is an absolute winner. And the headlining is looking very good. Uh, right, let's have a look in here and then we'll look in the boot and the bonnet and that will end the video. Passenger side front, get rid of this massive moth. Uh, he is probably original to the car. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, I've noticed there's a cover missing here. I've got loads of these in stock for this switch. Get that straight on. Happy days. Oh, a bit of damage here to this trim. Um, I've got these in stock. I might actually just sort of bond that back together because that, uh, if I start removing all this, is probably going to damage this door rubber. And it's not the end of the world, that. I won't be having passengers in it. That's not a major issue. Uh, glove box, what's in there? Just some bits. I've got no idea what that is. What on earth is that? It's a Mitsubishi part, so it's going to be for this car. I'll Google the part numbers. Um, ah, I've got the original tax disc holder as well. Golden Hill Garage. There are some stickers and decals missing. We've got the missing uh, unleaded fuel decal. We've got a few others. This has been out at some point in its life. I don't know why. Leave that alone, John. Apart from dirt, these gullies are looking good. This sunroof module here will need painting. Mm, I'm impressed. <laughs> I don't sound it, I know, but I am. Um, yeah, okay. All right, let's pop the boot, let's pop the bonnet. Let's pop the fuel filler cap as well. Actually, I'm going to do the fuel filler cap first because they like to rot around the fuel filler cap. Boot, fuel filler, bonnet, all pulled. Uh, oh my goodness, we'll have a look at that in a minute. Yeah, uh, it's not rusty yet, but it's going to go if we don't clean it up quick. Can you see? Interesting that in 1996 they are still using Mitsubishi branded fuel filler caps. <laughs> still not progressed to a, their own proton stamped fuel filler cap. Unleaded fuel only, of course. We'll get in there and have that clean, so I'll leave that open. Um, boot then. They rot round here, let's have a look first. There's no rot there, that's looking good. This garnish isn't damaged, they normally crack here at this corner. It looks like it is cracked, but it, it, it's actually not that, it's the way that it's built with this gap, um, Malaysian style. Looking good here, just dirty. And you can see the actual colour, it doesn't show up great on this camera, but it's like a purplish grey. And one way to tell if it's ever had any bodywork damage to the boot lid is these little tacks, this weld, is normally missing this. That's like gunk that's painted. You can see that it's all in place and the actual bonnet lid, boot lid, is still stuck to these struts, so it's never been damaged that, which is really nice. This is good. Boot lock's in good order. Um, I obviously clearly can't see under all this gumph. Um, this is all power steering stuff. I don't know why it's in here, but maybe somebody has got a spare set or there's an issue with the power steering. Who knows? Here's going to be a litmus test. Oh, a bit of corrosion there, it's surface. It's dry as a bone in there, there's no water. Oh, there you see, these are another set of floor mats. Unbelievable. I've got another full set of proton floor mats in there. <laughs> Bonkers. What's in here, are these just boxes? Yeah, they're headlight boxes, but they're the original, genuine proton parts boxes, so I'll keep those for my collection. Uh, boot. I can't really get under here without having a good look. Is this the original boot liner? Blubbing well is. I've never seen one of these. The original plastic boot liner. I'm not going to force that up because I'm going to end up damaging that. I expect the uh, boot floor is probably going to be a little bit rusty. I've got a spare gear knob as well if you want one. Uh, but I'm not concerned about the boot. What I am concerned is probably what I'm going to find under the bonnet. Look how filthy it is. You can see how filthy it is. Um, I'm going to have to put you down for doing this because I need to push this down to lift the bonnet, else it's going to end up scratching it. 
Uh, so there'll be a pause and then we'll open the bonnet. If you've never had the pleasure of trying to lift a Proton bonnet, they weigh about a million tonnes. <laughs> this is what I was talking about then. So at some point, this bonnet has been knocked and it's come unstuck from its weldings, especially there, not this side. It's probably just where it's been lifted. Um, under the bonnet then, not looking too bad, it needs a good old clean. We've got the Magma 12 valve engine, which is a Mitsubishi engine. Um, we've got the original wax look, <laughs> all on the uh, timing belt cover. And uh, this is the multi-jet system. It's fuel injected, this one. Um, and I have actually repaired and replaced that yesterday, which is the... Uh, clutch cylinder as I said um, it's looking really good actually these strut tops are not rusty this one's got surface rust but it's not rotten the battery is no good coolant system looks good see these are the these are little plastic wells not plastic wells little weldy bits they see they fit in there and they're from their original to the car uh, nothing I can do with that apart from give it to the birds um, radiator looks okay yeah, looking fine. Um, I've got no major concerns about this car underneath. There's a few rust spots that might need patching to get it through an MOT. And, and that's the thing, the car's been off the road since 2019 due to an MOT failure. Um, I've looked at the history. I actually think the MOT tester was being a little bit unfair. Um, I'm not an advocate for unfair MOTs, be that too lenient or too harsh but i think i don't know maybe a couple of hundred quid less a few hours of patching welding underneath this will probably fly through an mot um i'm going to clean it next and that'll be another video uh, just to see what it looks like underneath all the dust and dirt and grime um but if you have enjoyed the video please uh, please give it a like please give it a thumbs up and until next time just was checking it out. Have a great day, whatever you're getting up to. This is a long old video, as you say, because it's a full in-depth tour, but um, there's a shorter tour on the channel. Have a great day, whatever you're getting up to. Me and Crystal are having a sit down now, so we're, we'll probably get a cup of tea. <laughs> Have a great day, take care, goodbye. Buenos dias, you absolute legends. John here with this. <laughs> it's finally arrived this morning. This is one that I have been coveting for a long time for the Kuplan collection. Uh, it is a white saloon. It is a Proton, of course, and it's a 1.5 SE, top of the range, covering just 44,000 miles from new uh, and with, I think, two previous owners I really have been coveting this car for quite a while and it has arrived as part of the six car Proton collection and in this video uh, it's a uh, in-depth walkthrough of the car having a look as found come with me then uh, as we have a look around this car one that I really cannot wait to have a look around today if you haven't already smash subscribe hit the like button uh, and uh, what do you reckon so far comment down below we'll take a look we'll take a look all the way around then we'll do the interior we'll do the exterior we'll do the engine bay as well uh, right then so K Reg uh, so what's that uh, 1990 293, I actually don't know. Uh, supplied by Holloway's Proton. Not Steph Holloway from iDriver Classic fame, uh, but uh, a Volvo and Proton dealership, I think in Malvern. Um, looking at the front bumper, this lovely, lovely trim is all nice and silvery still. We've got a little bit of an issue with this indicator lens where it's uh, fogged up, the seal has broken. I've got loads of these in stock, so I can just replace that. This wing looking nice, all original paintwork as far as I'm aware, uh, and the wheel arch itself, let's have a feel, beautiful, no issues there. One thing you might have noticed uh, is we've got these aftermarket wheel trims, I hate them, they are not the SE wheel trims, the SE wheel trims should be a three spoke, but the good news is I know someone that's got a set of those in stock, uh, so they'll be going straight on the car after this video. Uh, badges, nice and shiny, indicator lens is all good as well. And these Proton badges, they normally fade. That's in really good condition, that UK spec Proton badge. 
We'll take a look down this side then. Obviously we've got sill covers on. I'm just gonna get on the floor and have a look. There's a little bit of dirt and debris on the sills. They need a good old clean, but actually they don't look rotten. Uh, and I've been underneath the car before I've bought it, obviously. And I can assure you there is no rot there at all. This door, nice and straight. There's absolutely zero dints in that door, um, which is lovely. And one thing I do love about this car, which I want to point out, is this pinstriping, uh, which goes all the way down the car, both sides, and there's no damage at all to any of that. Bit of dirt and grime in here. Needs a good old scrub. But as found, uh, so far, really happy. Wing mirror, nice. No damage to that. And that glass is all in good condition as well. Being the SE model, uh, automatic uh, wing mirror controls. I'm going to have a look at that in just a moment. Um, passenger's door then. There is a slight car park dent here. You'll never see it unless you're looking for it. But I know it's there. And I'm pointing it out for the purpose of this video. Uh, but apart from that... All good here as well. Starting to look a little bit tired on these uh, door pillar trims. But actually, one thing that is really good to note is these two little blast plastic black tabs. They just finish the end of this door trim. They always go missing. They always pop out. And actually, this car has got both of them. Um, take a look then. This glass, all original glass from what I can see. We've got the Proton um, National Vehicle Security Register sticker and etched into the glass you can just probably see there uh, is the markings um wheel arches then this back wheel arch there's a little bit of surface rust here i won't lie uh, it's just starting to blemish and um, all i'm going to do here is get a bit of wax oil and just wax oil all up here all up here and all up here as well just to keep it nice and protected i'm um, not going to do too much to that you start touching it start messing about with it that's when you give yourself problems. Um, obviously we've got the Proton mud flaps and the back bumper. This back bumper is so straight. I've never seen a Proton back bumper um, in such good condition. The only thing I would say is the silvering has been lost on this trim. I'm not gonna touch that. I'm not gonna mess about with it. But the way to tell if a back bumper's been off is you have to lift this trim here uh, because there's a screw here to actually remo <coughs> excuse me, to remove the back bumper and this has not been touched. So this bumper is as straight as it is and has never been removed. As far as I can see then, still uh, no paint has been done. There's a deep scrawk there. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm not going to touch that because it's so close to that uh, pinstriping. I'm not even going to bother touching it. One thing I would point out is there's a little bit of damage to this clip on the back window because this uh, back window trim has popped out at some point. We'll have a look at that, but not too much. We'll leave that alone. Uh, the back then, being the SE model and this being the MPI Catalyst model, you get a spoiler. It's a rubberized spoiler, and you can see here there's a little bleb in the spoiler. That's where water gets in and it blebs up and then eventually pops like this. Uh, this last week, when I went to look at the car, was not like this, uh, but you can see that over the week or so it has just blebbed and there's going to be some water in there uh, and that's what's caused it to bleb i'm going to just stick that back down the best i can and leave that alone to stop it from spreading i might even put just a little patch of white tape on there just to keep that nice and tidy uh, the rear then badges looking nice and clean and in really good condition again with these tail lights and this trim this trim is in lovely condition they normally snap at the top here there's no damage to that trim as far as i'm aware i'll have a better look um, when i am in the boot rear fogs all in good condition uh, no cracking we've actually got the original rear number plate here as well which is a uh, holloway mulvern limited 0684 892 two double five um, it's nice to have that it means that i can replicate original dealer stickers uh, and uh, tax disc holders etc etc exhaust looking nice let's have a look underneath let's have a look at the exhaust uh that exhaust is probably going to need a little bit of work to be honest with you for the next uh for the next mot because it's held on a little bit unusually uh it was a advisory on the last mot i know about it uh, it's something I've got to have a look at that exhaust. Uh, this SE triple valve badge, really good condition. It's a good old scrub, you know, uh, above it and below it. But for a white car of this age, it really is uh, looking nice. 
uh, back window then you might see that there's the uh, rear parcel shelf speakers again being the SE model uh, that is there and there's a think motorway safety don't be a lane hog don't follow closely don't stop don't drive when tired sponsored by Shell UK Limited um, I'm probably going to remove that and that will end up being the original dealer sticker there uh, but I'll try and find a, a replica of this sticker uh, think motorway safety is that from the 90s do we think I'm, I'm not a motorway safety sticker expert um, looking ahead then to this side pretty much much of a muchness if I'm honest um, nice and tidy this panel uh, wheel arch again same sort of condition needs a little bit of TLC ie there's a little bit of paint blistering uh, but actually up here no major concerns uh, wax oil on there job done aftermarket wheel trims all the way around as I say uh, and then looking to the driver's side ah you see here's a good example uh, this little trim has popped off here because this trim is a little bit loose and they sit in little clips. I'm not going to mess about with that, but I am going to put a little trim back in there. I've got quite a few of these little trims that I've salvaged over the years. Um, so that's one job that needs doing. One thing I didn't notice before. And then this door, I'm not sure what's going on here. There's a little blemish here that you can see. I'm going to have a look because it looks like it's original paint. So whether or not the paint has just got something on it and it's marked it and it will tea cut straight out or there's something a bit more sinister going on there, we need to have a look. Uh, but that's one issue that I found in the paintwork. Second issue uh, that I found is on this wheel arch because it's just starting to rust blemish here where the, um, the mud flap sits. I need to have a look at that. That could be something more sinister. Uh, again, this wheel arch just starting to show a little bit of sign of corrosion and of course you see it on white cars don't you so I'm going to take that mud flap off have a look behind it I can see already there's some water and some gunk behind there that might just tea cut off i.e being surface rust but obviously on this lip I want to be really careful because this uh, this is original paint and it's really thin front bumper then there's a slight knock here it's been with a paint chip uh, and the bonnet Looking really good, this bonnet and uh, grill. This grill needs a good clean, there's a rust mark there. Uh, but this emblem is lovely and shiny. Uh, it just needs a good old clean, there's some fly. <laughs> Fly's been splattered clearly on the way whilst it's being, uh, being delivered. Um, what else can I see on this car? We've got a little bit of paint blemishing here. But apart from that, all good and then let's look at this windscreen the windscreen hasn't been out it is the original windscreen i've checked but this trim here is just starting to lift it clips into some clips and i believe that those clips at some point in its life have probably snapped and broken and uh, i'm going to need to sort of seal that back down a bit of tiger seal something like that that'll keep that nice and uh, secure roof then let's look at the sunroof being an SE obviously has a sunroof as well. This is a Wabasto Top Slider 2 for anyone that cares. They normally bleb and blemish around here. Uh, no, we're looking good so far and I would suggest that is all original paint. Again, there's a slight wiggle here appearing. Uh, could be surface. It's not going to affect the car in my lifetime, uh, I don't believe. Um, apart from that, I can see that the headlining is sagging a wee bit at the front here. And that's not a major issue that will just be pushed back up and sealed um, and the only other thing I've noticed is around here this trim here which is obviously the aerial the aerial pulls up and down um, it's a bit rusty around here again I'm going to try and uh, do a little bit of tea cutting around there I'm not going to be removing this I'm not even going to attempt to unscrew this I've got a few of these in stock but they have a lovely seal around here and if you break that seal it's going to cause me a whole world of pain with water getting in and inside the pillars. So that's the exterior of the car. So far looking good. I'm excited by this. I hope you're as excited by this as I am. Uh, let's take a look. We'll start, we always start with the passenger side, don't we? This is the collection going on at the moment. Uh, things I've noticed. I'm missing a couple of stickers. I'm missing a tax disc. Uh, I'm missing the RAC sticker. 
Uh, I'm missing the OK Proton sticker, which is the uh, um, sort of quality control sticker. I've still got my unleaded sticker here, and I've got my security register sticker. Uh, I would have expected it to have a Blaupunk security sticker as well, so I'm probably going to be replicating one of those. Right, now, this is what lets the car down, in my opinion, for me. Um, it has a brown interior. I don't like the brown interiors. I like the grey and the silver and the blue interiors. But beggars can't be choosers, right? Um, and so it does. It has a brown interior. Uh, SE model again. So we've got electric windows front and uh, not the rear. Uh, the rear is window winders. But we've got electric windows. I haven't tested those yet, so they may or may not work. I've got this velour trim. It's like a brown and blue spot. There's actually no damage to this trim. And we've got carpeted door pockets here. Um, need a little bit of TLC in there, as in a clean-up. And then what's this? Is this damaged? No, it's just some muck. So there's just a little bit of mud and muck uh, here. A little bit of muck here as well. It actually looks like sand. Uh, if I get my um, extractor on that, it's going to pull these up beautifully. Uh, Front seat's looking okay. There's no rips or tears, no damage to the velour. Uh, the headlining also looking good, and that sunroof we'll have a look in just a moment at. Um, brown dash, SE model, so we've got an electric clock. Um, one thing that I have noticed that is missing is the original radio. It should have a Blaupunkt radio. I've got some in stock uh, that I've taken off a couple of SEs, so I'll be refitting the original stereo, but actually... It works, this stereo, and uh, the vendor has put a couple of these in. What else have we got in these little cubby holes? Uh, nothing in there. Nothing in the ashtray, but look how clean that ashtray is. I.e. there's no ash in there. Let's do look at the cigarette lighter. <laughs> yeah, that's never been used uh, for smoking, which is good news. It means that this car has never been smoked in, which means I don't expect to see any cigarette holes in anything. Oh, what have we got in here? We've got some bits in here. Uh, ah! Ah! Now that is a tool for fitting the uh, tri-spoke wheel trims. That uh, is going to... I'll put that back in there actually before I lose it. That's probably going to keep me in good stead, which means that there's probably some wheel trim nuts somewhere. Happy days. Oh my goodness. Oh yes. Look at that. Now that is the original tax disc holder. I have never seen one of these before. Holloways of Malvern Proton. Oh, that's a nice find. Uh, in fact, it doesn't even need replicating, does it? It just needs re-sticking back onto the uh, onto the windscreen. Oh, I'm chuffed to pieces with that. That's uh, a little bitty bonus, and by the looks of things, there's some old tax discs in there as well. We'll have a look at them uh, when we get the car out. Uh, original floor mats. I think we've got them all around. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we've got original floor mats. This is the passenger's side. Looking nice. No damage to this bolster. This velour is beautiful as well. Really is gorgeous. It needs a good old scrub here, as I say, but that will come out. Not an issue with an extractor. Uh, seat belt holders in really good condition. And then you've got the left and right wing mirror adjusters. And sorry, I forgot to look at the heater knobs as well. So no AC on this model, but uh, all these, all these brown slats are in good nick. This car's really been looked after, I won't lie. Uh, let's have a look under here. Yeah, nice. Fine, grab handles, all good. Passenger side then. Uh, same as before, but with windy window handles. Got a full set of floor mats here. Centre console tunnel cover. Let's have a look in the ashtray. <laughs> that is uh, a full set of... Well, I think it's locking, not locking wheel nuts, but wheel trim removal tools. There they are. There's the wheel nuts for the SE wheel trims. Let's just get that. One, two. I'm hoping for four. Three. That's not one. Okay. I've got three. That's a shame. I was hoping to have four. Um, I think I've got some of these somewhere in stock. So that's not the end of the world, but at least I've got three locking wheel trim uh, nuts. I'm going to put them safe in my pocket. There they go. 
Don't let me lose them. Don't let me forget them. If I ask where they are, they're in my back pocket. Uh, map holders, nothing in there. Fine. Rear seat's looking good. Being the SE model, seats fold down. Have a look at that in more detail in just a moment's time. This rear uh, seat, a little bit of marking here. It looks like oil, to be honest. I can get that off, not a problem. Uh, with an extractor, I'm going to have a full Zvax extract on this. But it's in really good condition. Uh, massively happy so far with this. Uh, we'll come back to the boot. We'll do the boot last. Um, passenger side, driver's side. Looking good, all much of a muchness. All in good condition. Again, folds down. Rear speakers, by the way. There in the parcel shelf. They're all original. Anything in this map pocket? No. Uh, so far, so good. Now through to the driver's side. A little bit of wear on the driver's bolster. And you can see there's a little bit of rusting here. I think that's just a case of tidying it up and leaving it. It's just surface rust. I think where it's been rubbing on this mirror trim. A little bit of wear on the bolster here. Uh, and obviously the seat is a little bit dirty. It needs a good old extract, as I say. But no. And uh, nice to see the original Proton sticker here. Horn push. Uh, and bevel here as well. 44,892 miles from new then. Being the SE model, you get a rev counter. Excellent, that's a bonus, isn't it? Uh, what we'll do is we'll pop the hood, we'll pop the boot, and we'll pop the fuel filler cap, and we'll have a look first at the fuel filler cap. Unleaded fuel only, that sticker's there, that's a good start. And we've got the original Mitsubishi branded fuel filler uh, cap. This needs a good old scrub as you can see, but at least the mechanism works. Uh, close that, have a look in the boot. <gasps> now I did not know genuinely that these were in here. The uh, seller said she might have got a set. Clearly the seller has found a set and clearly the seller has included them in the sale. That is gold dust right there. A full set of SE wheel trims in relatively good condition with little to no damage on the edges. The edges tend to break because people bash them uh, and they break. Awesome. Happy about that. Let's have a quick look under here. Uh, I don't know where to put these. In fact, I'm going to put these gently and carefully on the grass so A, I don't scratch them and then B, I'm going to give them a good scrub in a minute uh, and put them on the car. Winner, winner. Uh, so I can have a look underneath here. One, two, three. There's some uh, extra trim there as well, by the way, for the trim that goes sort of around here. Uh, I'm not going to fit it, but let's have a look under here. Okay. Um... Fine, that's not boding well. Ah, it looks like the original boot liner um, wood has died basically. Uh, I've actually got a brand new one of those in stock. Oh, I don't like what that is. Uh, it's a bit wet under here. That's not filling me with confidence. Oh, we've got the original spare wheel, uh, a GT70 tyre, made in Malaysia. That'll be, um, yeah. Made in Malaysia, there it is. Uh, there's no toolkit in this car, which I need to find the toolkit for it then, and I do not like this soaking wet rag. Oh no, there is a toolkit, but the soaking wet rag is not filling me with confidence. So I'm going to take said soaking wet rag out of the car and literally just bin it, get rid of that. Uh, I see why it's there, it's to stop things from damaging the paintwork, but also it's soaking wet, which I need to address. It's going to be coming in through these lights, 100%. In fact, I can feel it coming in through the lights. Something we need to address, but original toolkit, it says Mitsubishi on it, but it is an original Proton toolkit. Stick that in there, stick that back down there. Uh, this is just plastic, you can have a good scrub and then stick that over there. And I'm going to forget about that for now, but I'm going to have to address the wet in the boot. Uh, that's the boot then, let's go around to the bonnet. Don't tread on those. 
it's quite busy on the roads today. People are heading off to school. We'll open the engine bay. I won't open bonnet, have a look in the engine bay, and that'll be the end of the video. Okay, so I've opened the bonnet, and the first thing I said to myself was, blimey, it's ever so warm under here. Uh, it is ever so warm under here. It's not concerning. There's some corrosion to the radiator there, but my concern is, is there actually any coolant in this thing? Um, I don't really want to open that on myself and cause me a drama. Uh, I would suggest that needs a coolant flush. That's not looking good at all under there. It's all dirty and grimy and horrible. Uh, it's one of the first things I'm going to do. And there's no screen wash in there either. Hmm. Okay. Uh, mechanically, as far as I'm aware, though, all good. Uh, this battery looking fine. Someone's clearly had it on charge. Uh, let's cover that over. Airbox looking fine. Branded Mitsubishi, as it should be. Natural White by Burger Paints. It's white, isn't it, right? Um, the engine bay needs a little bit of TLC, and I'm not filled with confidence by that radiator. Uh, I've got some of these in stock. I've got new ones in stock. I might end up having a new radiator on there before I take it any sort of distance. Uh, Multi-jet engine, as I say, very hot under here. A little bit concerning. Oil leak, by the way, down there. Mm. It appears I'm going to probably have to do some mechanical work as opposed to cosmetic work. But nothing that I don't think is something that I can't do myself or is unachievable. I certainly don't think it's going to be a new engine. I certainly don't think it's going to be a new gearbox. But we live and learn, right? Uh, a little bit disappointed under the engine bay, I won't lie. There's some leaves and bits and pieces. But it's one of those things that at least it gives me a chance to have a good clean up under here and see it in its honest form. Last thing we'll do then is we will start the engine up, uh, listen to it running. It's got the Magma uh, 12 valve engine in there, the triple valve. Uh, we'll start it off. I've got two keys. I've got a proton key and I've got an external one that's been made. Make sure she's out of gear. Always make sure your car's out of gear before you start it up, please. Turn the key and straight away she started. I've got no issue with the uh, mechanicals of the car. There it is. Tick, 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 ticking away. That's it then. Uh, a real in-depth look at this white proton saloon 1.5 se if you've enjoyed the video as i say give us a thumbs up please uh, there'll be plenty of updates on this on the channel because i'm going to keep this car as i say it's going to be part of the fleet i'm going to daily it for a little while in the summer as well let me know what you think in the comments below until next time have a great day whatever you're getting up to take care if you haven't followed me on twitter instagram facebook and the tiktoks it's john coopland all one word that's j-o-n-c-o-u-p-l-a-n-d Till next time, have a great day or whatever you're getting up to. Take care and goodbye. Legends, welcome back to the channel on what is a drizzly morning here in Lincolnshire. Today I want to show you around this. It is a 1993 Proton 1.5 GL. Uh, it's one that came as part of the six car collection out of a garage locally and this is a brief walk around video having a good um, in-depth ish look at the car. Now you can already probably see there's a massive hole in this rear wheel arch. The honest answer is it's probably going to end up being scrapped this car but let's have a quick look. This is the one that if you haven't seen the video already I reversed up the drive and the suspension arm snapped itself to pieces. So I wanted to just document the car as found, joys of Lincolnshire, uh, as found before we sort of wash it, clean it off and have a good look inside. First thing I can see then, massive dint in this bonnet, not a major issue, um, but actually she's very rusty. We've got a rust bleb coming here on this wheel arch as well. Under here, not too bad, but the suspension is starting to crack this side as well, I won't lie. Um, it's nice and straight. There's not many dints or dents on it. There's one on that back window, uh, wing, but uh, 
actually quite a straight car it's probably not the best doing this in the in the rain you can see that it's starting to blister in places uh, around the windscreen and this car has been off the road sort of 10 years now we've got a wiggle in this door you can see it's all dented in that door um, and looking at the bottom here eh, not too bad but we then come to this side and you can see that there's a massive <laughs> massive hole in this in this wheel arch and that's going to cause a problem long term in fact I'm gonna just take my finger and push and I suppose if it's bad there <laughs> there's a hole here yeah this is scrap and uh, this car's not going to be back put back on the road and you might think well hang on a minute John that's that's a big shame it is but also we're going to end up uh, being fodder for another one uh, take a look around this side then you can see it's filthy it needs a good old scrub uh, and it was supplied by a mount soil service station uh, in leicestershire boot lid well actually that's just a little bleb that's gone a bit rusty and um, the badges are good the back bumper is good as well on this one you've got the original number plate and then coming along to this side the usual has happened here it started to discolor here uh, this wheel arch starting to go as well and we've started to get a little bit of blistering there paint bubble blistering let's um, put the hands underneath this side I haven't got any holes in the sills yet but um, it's starting to go here as you can see more than just surface rust there uh, then this front wheel arch here it's creaking I feel under here oh yeah I've just put my hand through the sill there as well um, apart from the holes she's not overly bad take a look at the front here things that are going to be useful indicator lenses grill front grill lights uh, wiper arm linkages uh, just general bits and pieces but this car yeah it's not going back on the road I don't think looking uh, looking around it let's have a look uh, in here then oh, we can't have a look in there have I locked it I've locked the car we'll have to go <laughs> go around this side um, I'll start with the driver's side so the car itself has covered 151,000 miles so she's had a good old run and the interior isn't massively too bad. Um, obviously the centre console will come out. I'll probably leave the dash to be honest with you. Uh, this will come out. These are worth cash. <laughs> About £100 a piece those are. Um, yeah, let's pop the boot. Let's pop the bonnet and have a look. Uh, I'm not overly impressed. Uh, yeah, we've got some more rot here. Look, in this sill. Creaking. It has had a lot of money thrown at it in its lifetime, I believe. Ah, yeah, this is not looking good here either, look. Uh, and there, it's clearly past its, uh, past its prime. We'll look in the boot, see what's in the boot. Oh, rust is in the boot. Uh, spare wheel. That's gonna be the original wheel, actually, looking at that. It is, it's a GT70 look, it's the original wheel. Um, I don't know what this is, but the fact that you can see the floor, there's my, <laughs> there's my piggies uh, through the hole, and it's really echoey. Uh, I don't know what that pipe's for. Boost pipe. Um, there's not much in here. I'm going to put my hand down here. Well, there's water here, you can see it's leaking somewhere. Um, yeah. It's certainly going to need a lot of love to put back on the road. And it's really not going to be worth it, I don't think. Let's pop the bonnet, have a look underneath the bonnet, and that will end this video. Under here, then, the usual 
Magma 12 valve engine, it's the injection model. Airbox is looking okay ish. Um, battery, of course, and coolant tank. Probably not going to take much off this car, if I'm honest. Things like the wiper linkage, the grill, the lights, the horn push, maybe the steering wheel for the other one. Uh, but yeah, not major. What do you reckon, Crystal? Crystal says, scrap it. Um, I say scrap it, the, the lads who picked the car up for me um, will have it, they'll recycle it. Uh, they're also scrap metal merchants, so they will uh, take care of everything that side. It's a shame, I know, and some people are probably going to be screaming at their telly saying, hang on a minute, there's only a few holes in the sills and wheel arches and that sort of thing. But we saw what happened yesterday with the suspension. Um, I haven't had a good look underneath it. I'm not going to put it on a ramp. But I think that's going to uh, probably throw up some more issues. Let me know what you think. Uh, I'm a bit disillusioned by this one, as you can probably tell by the way I'm sounding. Um... Yeah. Till next time, if you've enjoyed the video, please uh, give it a thumbs up, please give it a like, please give it a subscribe. What do you reckon? Is it saveable? Is it something you want to take on? Throw £300 my way and you can have it. Uh, until next time, have a great day, whatever you're getting up to. Take care. Goodbye. Hello, you absolute legends. Welcome back to the channel. John here, and I've bought this. Pointing at it because this is something that is new to the fleet and new to the channel. This is a quick walk around as purchased. Uh, it is an Audi, and it's not for me, it's actually for Mrs. John Coupland. And if you haven't watched the other videos on the channel, you might know that I've already got one of these, um, but not this exact model. Um, it's a gray overcast day, uh, and I've just been and picked this one up for the collection. Story behind it, saw it advertised on eBay, was watching it and it thought it looked very, very good. And it was local to me, it was about half an hour away in a town called Spalding um, and decided that rather than messing about on the eBay bids um, I would contact the seller and say look can I come and have a look at it with a view of buying it and us fixing a deal. Um, the seller had been messed about before, it had sold, it had previously sold on eBay for £1,050. Um, this was earlier this week and uh, I went down uh, again because he'd relisted it and the current bidding was at a thousand pounds. Here's the inside then. It is a Roadster. It is a low spec Roadster. It's a 53 plate, so 2003, covering 98,000 miles from new. It's had quite a few owners, uh, us being now the fifth owner, but it's in wonderful condition. Naturally, it's not been messed about with, and that's what I liked uh, about this. It was on its original wheels. Paintwork hadn't been messed about with. It hadn't got silly aftermarket bits and pieces everywhere. Um, and it was in generally good condition. So I had a good look round it when I was there, obviously. Uh, and it normally rusts out here. That's what I'm pointing out, that these roasters normally rust here and corrode. But actually, it's in very good condition. There's not... I was going to say there's not a spot of rust on the car, but that's a lie. There is. There's a slight paint blemish on one of the wheel arches at the front. Um, this is looking in the boot, then. We've got the original Audi tonneau cover, and there's an Audi fire extinguisher and first aid kit there as well, and a car cover. The car had been loved. You know, it's not one of these that hadn't been loved. Uh, the lady that had owned it, uh, her initials SEW, uh, had had it for 10 years prior. Um, and the reason that she was selling it is that due to work, she was then given a company car, and she uh, she didn't need to keep this one or drive this one. Lovely family, um, who were genuine and honest. I took it for a good old spin and drives wonderfully. It really does drive nicely. These TTs, if you've never had a roadster, they do rattle and bang and pop and creak. and uh, They're not, you know, it's not like you're driving a luxury Audi. Um, this one does drive nice and smoothly. There's a couple of rattles. There's a uh, creak in the... Uh, driver's side a pillar where someone has fitted a dab radio aerial and probably just not put the trim back properly that's something i've got to look at but under the engine bay um it looks good we've got these plastic trim covers some of them are missing their scrivets but it's uh it's been well looked after so uh yeah anyway i i hightailed it down to spalding um sort of last week of may and uh and bought it for Mrs. John Coupland, and this is for her to enjoy and have as a bit of a summer toy, and actually I think I'm going to probably 
daily it and commute it to work a couple of times a week just to give it a run. Uh, but it is in fantastic condition. Cloth seats. It's not the turbocharged version, i.e. it's not the 225 or the 3.2 V6 edition. It is the 180 brake horsepower. Uh, no heated seats. No Quattro. Uh, really is well, it's probably a, a glorified Volkswagen Golf, if you want to put it that way. Um and I'm, I've heard all the jokes before, hairdresser's car, girl's car. I don't believe that there's a, a thing of, of girl's and boy's car. Yeah, it's got that stigma of being a hairdresser's car, but I actually quite like them. Uh, if that means I need to put a pair of scissors in the front glove box, then I certainly will. So yeah, this is just a quick walk around. There'll be a more in-depth walk around uh, video on the car on the channel when I uh, get round to it. There's a few things I need to address. Um, there's a bit of trim missing on the driver's side uh, door. Uh, I've already ordered one of those, it was 14 quid. Um, this is me showing you the glass wind deflector going up and down because this is the Roadster. And if you've never had one of these, um, they're great fun. They are great fun. That's that glass deflector going down to stop the buffeting. It doesn't work for me because I'm six foot four and I pretty much look over the windscreen when I'm driving it with the roof off. And there's me popping the roof on. So for 1100 quid. Um, Audi TT, long MOT, had thousands of pounds spent on it in the past few years, i.e. Uh, Haldex, you know, all the servicing and, and the oil changes and timing belt, new exhaust, hood. Uh, had, it had a new hood a couple of years ago as well, which is unbelievable that it's uh, lasted so well. Uh, it's going to be a good one. More on this on the channel. Let me know what you think. In the comments below, hope you've enjoyed the video. If you uh, have, give us a thumbs up. Give us a subscribe if you haven't already. What do you reckon? you reckon she's going to like it? Or uh, have I bought myself a problem waiting to happen? There it is then, Audi TT, Mark 1, Roadster, 180. Real base spec, looking good in lightning silver. Till next time, have a great day. More to come. Goodbye. Hello you absolute legends, welcome back to the channel, it's John here on a uh, windy but okay day here in Lincolnshire, taking a look then today at this just purchased, uh, it is a Mark 1 Audi TT Coupe, 225 brake horsepower with the BAM engine, uh, if that means anything to yourself, covering quite a few miles actually to be honest with you 139,450 miles so nearly 140,000 and it's one that popped up on the old Facebook marketplace yesterday uh, I saw the colour if you haven't watched the channel already I already have one of these in this colour but the Roadster edition um, and it was very local to me I thought well I'm gonna have to go and have a look at that aren't I so I did I went and had a look at it and uh, fixed a deal with the seller it's not perfect but it is a good starting point for a relatively usable everyday modern classic and um, i actually bought it for mrs john coopland it's for her to drive and enjoy if you uh, remember a couple of months ago i bought her a silver convertible and uh, well she liked it but didn't like it too much uh, in that she's not really a keen fan of the colour, so she hasn't actually driven it. So hopefully this one is something that she will enjoy some more. And you can see as we walk around the car, it's been modified. Um, it's had a few bits and pieces done to it, such as this, uh, which look terrible. And it, But it's not... Um, been bastardized too much that i can't put it back to standard things that are um, a big key for me is original interior original paint uh, original wheels original ride height etc etc things like decals these decals on these sills not a major issue to me um these horrible rear light tints are gonna go in a, we'll have a look at them in just a minute as we walk around the car but overall very good condition it's the 225 brake horsepower then that means you get xenon lights at the front and alien washers that's what they're called aliens um no mud flaps on here but actually um the wheel arches and sills looking good it has been painted in its life it has had work done to it this wing has been painted and the sills have been painted and this back panel has been painted as well but no major issues no major dints 
knocks or anything like that. There's a dint here on the bottom of this door, you can see. It's where someone's opened it on a, a curbstone or something, isn't it? That's something that I'm going to have to address. Um, and there's a scuff here on the sill here. Sure, that's where somebody has marked it getting in and out and they've just tidied it up. You'd never notice it if you didn't know it was there. Um, apart from that, looking good. Rear window has been tinted. Um, at the moment, I'm okay with it. I'm going to leave it as it is. The uh, number plate has been changed. We've got this horrible sort of 4D gel number plate. That's horrible. It's going. Getting rid of that. I think it's vile. Um, no honeycomb valance at the back because it's not a 3.2. Uh, the main thing is these horrible, horrible, horrible tinted lights. Um, it's just a film, so in theory, I should be able to heat that film up and just sort of peel them off. Uh, it's the, one of the first jobs I'm going to be doing. You can see it's just sort of peeling off there, so fingers crossed it's not stuck too bad. Um, yeah, and then get rid of these horrible things, this quattro decal that someone's put on there. Horrible, vile. Same with this one here. I don't think it suits the car. Um, mechanically, it's okay. Um, the brake pedal travels a lot further than I want it to. There's an issue with that. I think the brakes need bleeding. Um, and the coolant bottle's looking a bit murky we'll have a look at that in just a moment's time but overall outside looking good and the main thing for me is the electronics is looking good um no issues the uh the air conditioning seems to work fine the radio all seems to work okay as it should heated seats esp etc etc and you can see 130 39,426 miles being the coupe edition and not the roadster you actually get four seats one two in the back there and two here um don't know whether or not i'd ever actually get another person a human adult in the back there especially with me driving you can see my driver's position well you don't get any leg room um things i've noticed here this is broken this flap uh here you can just see it covers the uh covers the first aid kit that's broken then there's a cd changer the other side that's broken uh, again just cosmetic it's a piece of plastic i can get that replaced and repaired one thing i have noticed and this is a bit naughty of the seller is that they have removed the parcel shelf um, so i bought it yesterday i left it with the seller and there should be an audi parcel shelf here that flops down and covers this gap um, when it's not in use and he's removed that which is a little bit naughty i've rang him up i've called him out about it because i had the hind the foresight to take photographs of the car before i uh, when i left it and it was there i know it was there i've called him out he's admitted to removing it um so i'm going to go back and get it but in my opinion that's quite un gentlemanly um, and under here we've got a space saver wheel and the tool kit and some cable ties for some reason let's have a look what's in here take this out because I need to put the locking wheel nut tool away trim removal tool all that sort of stuff jack etc etc uh, that to me is the original space saver wheel and tie it's nice to see that we've got the full tool kit as well um, in good nick and good condition in fact while we're here let's put that locking wheel nut tool uh, in there never seen inside of one of these they're, they're quite swanky there's the tool uh, i don't know what's that what that is in there some o-rings of some description there's the locking wheel nut tool and it sits just in there well that's where it's going to sit might not necessarily sit in there always was it that way around there it is that's where it sits um, and then you can put this cover back on here it slots in place and then this screws back in there so yeah as i say a bit unsportsman like from the seller for that i left the car with him in good faith with the keys um to move to be able to move the car normally what i would do is take the v5 take the keys so at least if the seller disappeared um i could pick the car up um and yeah he's uh he's done me a bit dirty so bad sportsmanship not too happy uh, especially because i'm not going to drive another sort of hour and a bit to go pick it up back seats fold down they need a little bit of tlc actually they uh, don't fold down and lock in place perfectly but i'm not going to be really using the rear seats it's just for two this um and this is the original number plates the y742 svs so i've actually got them with the car in case i need them um let's take a look under the engine bay then 
Uh, we've got the original driver's map, by the way, not the original passenger's map. Again, that's gone missing. Um, I can't prove that it's gone missing overnight, sadly, because I uh, didn't photograph the driver's, sorry, the passenger's foot well. Um, he might have gone missing overnight. I'm not too bothered. Under the engine bay then, it's quite warm and I have no idea, no idea why that's there. It looks tosh. Um, I'll be taking that off this afternoon. Um, overall, mechanically good. It's had uh, sort of some forge uh, motorsport valve stuff fitted here and a dump valve as well, which is quite nice. Gives you a nice whoosh of air when you um, put your foot down on the turbo. But yeah, the coolant is looking a little bit gold and murky. Whether it's not had some sort of engine seal in the past or something similar, um, I haven't seen any coolant heating engine problems, so it could be that, that, that that's been addressed in the past, but I think one of my jobs is to take the coolant bottle out, flush it and flush all the coolant system. Apart from that, apart from a general tidy up, cleaning of all the lights and you know, uh, back to blacking all the grills and bits and pieces, not a bad looking thing. And uh, we'll, we'll be documenting what we do uh, throughout the life of the car on the channel. Right, let's shut that. Okay. Um, aside from that, looking in the passenger's rear this side. Oh, I've noticed that this seat belt doesn't retract properly. Um, which I've got absolutely no idea why. I think it just needs to be at the right sort of angle of dangle. Um, but that's something obviously we need to address. Else you're going to be shutting your seat belt in the... Uh, in the door and actually mrs john cooper brought that to my attention just a moment ago uh, mercedes benz uh, in fact do you know what let's take that off now that's terrible isn't it let's just rip that off if i can do it one-handed i can't do it one-handed yeah that, there's only one place for that and that's over there get rid of that terrible that's probably not helped by that situation either these seat belts seem to be sort of facing the wrong way a little bit and have got a twist in them but we'll have a look at that at a later date apart from that cd changer in the back here this flap as i say the clip's broken uh, that's not a major issue i can either um, ping that down or get some new um some new clips in there and actually i've noticed that the rear speakers don't work um, which they should do, shouldn't they? These are the rear speakers behind here, so um, we'll have to have a look at that as well. All in all, not bad. What did I pay for it? Well, just shy of £2,000 is the honest answer. Uh, have I paid a little bit too much? Mm, no, I don't think so. It's really rare in this Merlin purple. The wheels are in good nick. Um, and overall, a well looked after car um, some people would have probably told me to steer clear of it having the tints and the wraps and all this sort of nonsense um, it hasn't put me off am I going to take the tints off well maybe I'll probably have a peel of the tints at some point but I'm not, um, not overly bothered by the rear window tints these though are the next to go let me know what do you think what would you do uh, would you leave them horrible rear tints on or would you have them straight off like me if you've enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up if you wouldn't mind uh, and a like and a subscribe if you haven't already done so the next time you see it hopefully you'll look you'll be looking a little bit more shinier a little bit nicer a little bit better a little bit tidier in certain places and we'll have got rid of some of this nonsense <laughs> have a great day whatever you're getting up to take care and goodbye Hello you absolute legends, welcome back to the channel on a relatively windy day but uh, so far so good uh, in Lincolnshire and I've got a question for you. Have I just bought the best Nissan Micra in the UK? My answer to that is potentially, there's probably better out there but this one is a damn good one and in this video I want to show you round it, tell you about the history of the car, I don't want to rush this, uh, it's going to be a relatively long one, so buckle up, grab yourself a cup of tea and let's take a look around this beautiful Nissan Micra 1 litre Vibe that I have just picked up. So, like I say, uh, it is a Nissan Micra, it is a K11, it's a 2001 plate. 
Let me tell you about the car first and how it came to be in my possession. I was contacted by a chap, a friend of mine called Tom, Tom Morley. Big shout out to Tom. And if you know Tom from the classic car scene and actually the classic lawnmower scene, uh, then you'll know that he has got an eye for detail. So he uh, rang me a couple of uh, days ago and said, John, I know of a Nissan Micra for sale. Um, it's been meticulously looked after and pampered within an inch of its life. Is it something that you would like to give a home? And I said at the time, no, Tom, I, I can't. Um, I haven't got the space, I haven't got the time, I haven't got the money. Um, I, I just bought that, the purple Audi. I just sold the silver Audi. Um, and I said, no, thanks, but no thanks. And then a couple of days later, I said, go on then, send me some pictures. So he sent me some photographs, and I looked at the MOT history, and I couldn't believe what I saw. A sea of green, literally a sea of green. This car has never failed an MOT or had an MOT advisory. I know, right? So I said, go on then, Tom, pass my details to the owner. Um, so it's being brokered on behalf of a lovely lady who has owned the car since it was a couple of years old, whose name is Greta. Um, I didn't meet Greta. Uh, she's a elderly lady now. I met Greta's daughter who brokered the sale on her behalf. And just due to old age, um, uh, she's she's stopped driving um as has a lot of people and that's not an issue is it you know it's better to be safe than um, cause injury to yourself or someone else when it's unnecessary so greta gave up driving recently and reluctantly uh, decided that she needed to part with her nissan micro which is what uh, we're looking at now and tom contacted me uh, and i was vetted heavily uh, which is good, it is a good thing, by Greta, by her daughter, to make sure that I was the right person to buy this car. Um, things and hurdles I had to jump through. Is it going to be kept under cover? Well, you bet it is. It's going straight in a carcoon. Is it going to be looked after? Yeah, of course. Am I a dealer? Well, yes, I do sell cars from time to time, and you know this on the channel, but the reason I sell cars is to fund my addiction to uh, keeping stuff like this on the road. So uh, I passed vetting and I headed on down to Essex and picked the car up yesterday and drove it the sort of 150 miles back. Um, there is a video on the channel of me picking the car up, me journeying down to Essex to have a, uh, a look at it and pick it up. And if you haven't seen that video then it's up there in the corner right now. But this video is a full walk around tour of the car and having a chat about it. So, supplied, brand new, uh, by Glyn Hopkin in 2001. It was traded in, uh, and uh, it was traded in by the original owner after about 6,000 miles, where it was purchased by Greta and her husband for a princely sum of £4,995. I know that because it's on the paperwork. They bought it in 2003, and since then have looked after the car, and it has been there uh, in their possession ever since and as you can see it wants for nothing and has wanted for nothing so much so that when it's actually got its original tires on something we'll address later in the video what is it then it's a k11 that's the model shape and the model number of this nissan micra and in my opinion the best nissan micra uh, in the world Big shout out to the Bateman's driver who's just gone past on his mobile phone. That's captured <laughs> captured on my video as well. Uh, mm, I will, let's not comment about that. Um, so K11, K10, the squarey boxy shape, the K11 brought in in around 2000, uh, sorry, 1992, 93. Um, and actually, why do I have such a love for the K11 Micra? Well, I had one as my very first car. M278 OMO, a 1994 uh, base spec in a beautiful flame red. I wish I'd kept it. I really wish I had, but I hadn't. And then Dad bought me a W Reg Nissan Micra Sport. Dad used to work for Nissan uh, and Renault as well. And so he uh, was around these and he remembers uh, these back in the day when they were brand new. Anyway, one litre Nissan Micra Vibe. Uh, supplied by Glyn Hopkin. You can see that it's got all the Glyn Hopkin bits and pieces on here, including 
the sticker and the Glyn Hopkin badge and the number plates and a tax disc holder, which is one thing that sold me towards the car. Um, covering 20, I think 23 and a half thousand miles when I picked it up. It's just about to tick over to 24,000 miles. And uh, service history as long as the day is wide. I want to show you this, and there's a reason that I'm saving Nissans, and there's a reason that I wanted to save this Nissan Micra. Like everything, they've been used and abused, uh, unloved, and the majority of them now have disappeared. Finding a good one, now is the time to find a good one. Now is the time to put it away and enjoy it, because I can guarantee you in 10, 15 years' time, they will all be gone, apart from those that have been tucked away uh, or those that pop up because they've been meticulously loved by their normally elderly owners and they come up for sale uh, due to sad circumstances. Let's take a look then. Let's have a look around the car. We'll start here. We have got uh, plastic bumpers on this model and obviously we've got uh, metal wings um, let's take a look under the wing then can you see under there it is beautiful I'm gonna rub my finger along this line here there is not a single piece of rust under that wing there is a slight scuff here it's something that I don't know maybe a tree branch has brushed past it or someone with a bag um, I can get that out with a machine polish or a little bit of tea cut look at this lens it is so beautiful Nissan lens and we'll look at this tyre like I said it has got the original Dunlop sport tyres on Dunlop SP Sport 300 that is what the car would have been supplied with uh, the tread is okay the issue I've got is it's you know 20 odd years old I'm going to have to replace the tyres if I'm going to be driving the car. Um, I'm probably going to find myself a set of spare wheels, put uh, driving tyres on and keep these, obviously, as show tyres. Look at this trim, this beautiful Nissan trim. It needs a good old clean behind here, and there's been a little bit of scuffing on here and a little bit of paint wearing thin here, but actually, as a, a wheel trim, it's in very good condition. And um, I've got some of these brand new spare, so I'm gonna put them on the car. I'm gonna get on my hands and knees now, and I'm gonna look under here at the sills. <sighs> wow, look at that sill. <sighs> Is there any rust? Well, yeah, there's a little bit of tiny surface rust here. What am I going to do? Well, I'm going to wax oil within an inch of its life. I'm going to underseal all this. I'm going to underseal all there. There's not a spot of um, damage, though, under there. Let's take a look under the car. And you can see that it's very good under here. It's been very well looked after, including these arms. Look at those arms. Not a major issue there at all. Those sills, absolutely beautiful. Not a single wiggle in that sill. Um, and that is, uh, as it left the factory, it's not been painted this side. Um, I think it's had some paint work the other side, but we'll have a look at that in just a moment's time. As I say, it's going to be a long video. Buckle up, because I'm going to show you every single inch of this car. These are the original black, because it's a no-frills car. It's a base model car. Black, non-colour-coded uh, wing mirrors they are manual wing mirrors that there is from me driving at home it's a fly these will look beautiful once they've been um, back to black and, and, and preserved properly and in here you can see that is absolutely beautiful short break in the video because uh, mrs john kitten has made me a cup of tea so uh, we, we'll go and have to carry on doing what we're doing daisy what are you doing Daisy, what are you doing over... Oh, it's all kicking off now. Uh, right, where were we? Let's have a look. Right, hang on, let's have some tea. Mmm. Beautiful. Put that down over here. Lovely. Right, let's carry on. So we've looked at these wing mirrors. That's where we were, weren't we? We were looking at these wing mirrors. Now let's look at this door. And you can see we've got this... Uh, there's a bit of dust on there. Uh, we've got these lovely side 
rumble door protectors. They're on there, in, invocative of the S model and the base model. Um, a later model and the more posher model, posher model, you had moulded ones of these that were colour coded. Um, taking a look then at this window, you can see it's the original window. We've got the dealer stamp bits and pieces in there. Look at this door trim and these door rubbers. And uh, I'll just quickly open the door so you can have a look in there. We will have a look at the interior in full in just a minute's time. Uh, door handle, these haven't faded, they are this colour, this grey colour, that is the colour that they should be, you can also get black and also chrome ones, um, but they shouldn't be chrome. Take a look at this back window, a little bit of dirt and muck in there, but that's on the inside, it's you know, where I think there's been a cloth or something run along there and it's just left a residue, not a major issue, and look at this lovely sticker, this vehicle is protected by the security register. Uh, which is what these numbers are etched onto here. They're etched onto the uh, outside of the glass, done at the dealership. Lovely stuff. Let's take a look at this rear wheel arch then. And you can see there's a little bit of muck in there, uh, which I'm going to just get out now, because that wheel arch is beautiful under there. Look at that, absolutely wonderful. Need to clean this wheel arch a little bit at the back. There's a bit of mud on there from yesterday. But look at this arch, look under there. I'm going to rub my finger again, up around it. Absolutely immaculate, not a single blemish on there. Key locking fuel filler cap, we'll come back to that. Uh, this trim has been damaged. This is uh, the one that really lets the car down, this trim. I have got another one of these in stock, which I'll be replacing it with. But just looking down the side of this car, not a single mark. Absolutely beautiful. Right, let's come around to this side then. Uh, not colour-coded inserts on the bumper. You'll see on the bumper that there's marks here which look like tank marks. Now, I've done a little bit of research. The car's never had the back bumper painted, and it's actually on the front and the back. Now, I spoke to Dad, and... Uh, he recalls these coming into the garage and what they used to do is there would be protective tape on here on all the plastic from when they've painted the bumper he's confident that these tape marks and this mark here is from the masking tape applied at the factory when they have painted the bumpers and you can see just by me scratching it that it does come off so we've got all this white tape mark all on here and again, if you just scratch it with your fingernail, it does come off. Now, to me, if it's original to the factory, brilliant, but it does detract from the look of the car, and you can see here that it detracts from the look of the car. I am going to take it off, I am going to remove it, uh, which is a shame in a way, but also people that look at it would think, oh, that plastic's no good, as opposed to, ah, that plastic is original from factory. Badge is nice and shiny and beautiful. You can see we've got the original glass here and the trim is lovely. It does sometimes shrink back. On the earlier models, you used to get a gap that would end up being about four or five inches long, but that's nice. High level stop lamp looking nice. Rear parcel shelf, we'll come all to that in a moment when we look inside. Glyn Hopkin dealer sticker. Glyn Hopkin uh, dealer number plates. And this is a Vibe model, so I would have expected there to have been a Vibe sticker here. Uh, I think it's probably been removed, if I'm honest. Uh, and the Glyn Hopkin badge has been applied here. Uh, it's shiny, it's very good condition. I don't think you'll probably find one of them nowadays. Lights are looking good. Uh, they've got red trim here, which come up lovely with some silicon spray. Um, the majority of them were this red trim. Some of them had grey. It's a shame this doesn't really have the grey trim because sort of it's broken up by the red. But it's how it should be. It hasn't had lights taken from a red car. Roof, let's take a look at the roof. Well, you can see that it's in very good condition. We've got these strips all here that are just pressed into place on the roof. Uh, and we've got 
some sort of bird lime here I need to address. In fact, it does look like it's eaten into the paint a little bit. Which it has, it's something I need to look at that. Um, just making sure that's not a lacquer spot. There is a lacquer spot here as well, where uh, I think it's probably been touched up at some point. That is a shame actually, I've only just noticed that. You can tell by the tone of my voice I'm saddened by that. I think that will be made a bit better, but it is, it's bird lime. Uh, and it's where it's eaten into the lacquer. Here is the original um, aerial, you can see. And, uh, and the original window here. Again, let's look at this back wheel arch. You can see under there just how good it is. I need to get that mud out of there, but look at that, it's beautiful. Absolutely wonderful. This trim, again, has had a little scuff. I didn't spot that. This wheel arch, run my finger up along it. And under here, you can see it's perfect and it lines lovely with the butt bumper. It's definitely never been knocked. Um, this sill, let's have a look at this sill, this side. Under here. Wonderful. Needs a little bit of a clean i.e. it's got a bit of dirt but the sill is looking good certainly the original sill never been painted or replaced no rust on there door looking nice same with this wing mirror as before lovely lovely clean lines this trim appears to have been taken out at some point it's a bit loose not a major issue it might have just buckled actually over time but again run my finger up and under this wheel arch fabulous and have a look in there look in the liner so that's probably the original spring with the blue and the red on it and again a little bit of paint coming off this edge of this trim but nothing that I'm going to panic about original wiper arms you can see it's got the Nissan logo here uh, original front windscreen you can see as well by this register and we've got the original tax disc holder trim looking lovely and one thing I do like about these Nissan K11s is the the addition of this silver sort of nostril trim chrome nostril trim. I think it looks like a, a dragon, dragon's nostrils. Um, there's some grease on here. I wouldn't be surprised if it's from the factory. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Look at that under there. Fantastic. Let's look at that radiator. Excellent. Cross member looking good, and if you know your K11 Micros, the cross members are what fail these. These headlights are so shiny, so shiny, beautiful, absolutely wonderful. And again, same as the back, these sort of tape marks will come off with a little scratch and reveal the beautiful bumper underneath. So it's a job for job for another day. Blanking plates on the front fogs because it doesn't come with a front fog light. More tractors, the joys of Lincolnshire. Uh, that's pretty much the external of the car. Um, as you can see, relatively good. Uh, I'm devastated about this mark in the paintwork here. Can you see it? I'm not sure if it's been a chip that's blemished or if it has been a bird lime. It's not an issue. I can sort that out. I'm not going to cry over that, but it is a shame. Let's take a look. In fact, I'm going to have a slurp of my tea and then we'll take a look inside. Right, tea time. I've got my mug. I'm just going to stand here looking at it. Right, tea break over. 
Let's start in the passenger's side. We'll have a look round. Uh, door shuts and doors, you can see, beautiful condition. Look at that in there, absolutely wonderful. Absolutely immaculate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that door fully so you can see in this door shut just how clean it is. Look at that, absolutely wonderful. There's a little bit of a rub there. Probably where the door has sagged over time. It's not a major issue, I can sort that out. Right, wing mirrors, we've got manual adjusters. We've got manual windy keep fit windows. We'll drop this window down. The action of that is so smooth. Wow, absolutely no resistance at all on that. No resistance at all, and I'll tell you one thing. Look at that knob. <laughs> no, not me in the reflection. But look at the colour of that. Look at the condition. Look at this door card. It's absolutely spotless. It's an absolute testament to the previous owner of this car. It almost belongs in a museum, in my opinion. Here's the sill. And the door shut. Again, all round that door. Wonderful. So passenger side then, and I'm a bit funny about having these all nice and lined up. You can see the dash, you can see the colour and the condition. Let's have a look in there. Well, actually, that's my clip. I've put that in there. And it has had uh, a cabin filter recently, looking at the service history. Here's the carpet. You can see that it's had a mat in at some point, which has moulded the carpet. I've actually got some genuine new K11 microfloor mats to go in here. Look under there, absolutely wonderful. Under the seats and around to the seat itself. This bolster, nice. This bolster all nice and tight. And the seats are grey, they're not grubby. They're grey how they should be. The interior needs a little bit of a dust down as you can see in certain places but you know I've just run my finger along that piece of trim and it's got rid of most of the dust so if you can imagine me getting a sponge and a cloth on that it's going to really bring that up beautifully we'll look at the driver's side of things when we get there but this centre console nice and tidy there's no marks or anything on there I don't even think the cassette deck's ever been used, looking at it. I turned the radio on yesterday. It asked me to tune it in, whether or not the radio's been used. We've got the DC 12-volt adapter. <laughs> it won't even come out. It's that tight. I don't think that's ever been used either. In fact, I'm going to get my hand in there so you can see. I don't think that 12 volt adapter has ever been used in its life. Put that back in, pull the ashtray out. The ashtray certainly hasn't been, it's certainly not been smoked in. Look at this gear knob, absolutely zero wear to it and the handbrake as well. And the thing that normally deteriorates on cars, you can clean a car like this within an inch of its life. And what you cannot get looking brand new are the red bits on a seat belt. You agree with me? Well, look at how red those are. Absolutely wonderful. Right, let's have a look in the back. I'm almost scared to touch it. The back of that seat, immaculate. You can see the line where this sits and you can see the colour is exactly the same got no mats in the back but look at the way that that is set up and that headlining I'd be surprised if anyone has ever sat in the back of this I'd be very surprised in fact I bet they probably haven't right that's the back and the passenger side what we'll do is we'll go around to the driver's side and then we'll have a look in the boot around this side. Uh, when I drove the car home yesterday, I had a uh, seat cover on. 
And actually, there's a little bit of a colour here, where people have been getting in and out. Uh, and people have been touching it. And it's picked up more by my phone camera. But a quick bit of interior clean, and that is going to come straight off. Look how tight they are, them bolsters. Fantastic. Glyn Hopkin keyring. And all round the lock, no marks, no damage, where people have been jabbing at it with the key. And the key goes in nice. That steering wheel, nice. No marks. No damage. No damage to the horn push. And those clocks are there, 23,995. Just look at the stalks, look at the stalks, look at the colours of that. How vibrant and bright that is. Driver's footwell. Well, you can see that there's had a mat in and you can see that it needs a clean and a bit of a hoover out. But look at that foot pad. And there's a little bit of wear to these pedals. But you get a detailing brush on there, you'll never know. Same again with this door card, absolutely beautiful. this tyre pressure label it's like new it's absolutely unbelievably good but see this here this is me yesterday where I got in and out of the car and it was raining no scuffs or marks on this sill it almost needs a sill protector on doesn't it it's absolutely beautiful Let's pop the bonnet, and I'll take the key so I can open the boot. And what we'll do first and foremost is have a look in this fuel filler cap, I think. There we go. You can see in there needs a little bit of a clean. It's just, it's just dust. It's just dust in there. But that is stunning, isn't it? Wonderful. Shut that. Uh, I'll need the key again, actually. Look at, the, look at that key. It's so shiny. Uh, to open the boot. Put that away safe in my pocket. Lift these gently. Here's a little top tip for you for a K11. These pieces of trim are just plastic. If you lift from one side or another, they start to wear and rub. Always lift from the middle. Evenly. Right, here we go, we're in the boot. And you can see that there's no damage to the carpet. It's moulded where it's dropped around the spare wheel. They all do that, I understand that. But look at that. Printed 729, dispatch 1041, arrive 11 o'clock. There's a part number for you. That's going to be the original part number when it was built. Amazing. These seats do drop down. I'm not going to drop them down because I don't think they've ever been dropped. In here, nice and clean, a little bit of... In fact, that's wax from the factory. I'm going to leave that alone. Look at that round there, beautiful. And if you know your mic, because you know that the, the paint tends to fade here and flake. It's a weak spot. These are the original hydraulic lifters. You can see the seat belt tensioners in there and there. And there should, in theory, behind here, be a cable from the wiring loom, which has the speaker cable in. But I can't see it there, so maybe it wasn't an optional extra in this one. So you can have rear parcel shelf speakers potentially an option but look here look at this boot shut it's absolutely immaculate and the top of this boot uh, bumper no issues at all I think the next thing to do is lift this carpet I've got to be very careful because it's very brittle and I don't want to damage anything it's all tucked up under here let's lift this boot carpet 
and see what we've got. I'm hoping for the original toolkit <laughs> and the spare wheel. Uh, that's going to be the original spare wheel. There's the toolkit. There's the jack. And look at this look. Boot carpet. 291840. 294111. The boot carpet arrived just before the parcel shelf when they were assembling it on the factory. Um, I don't know genuinely if this is a UK car or if it's one that was built in Scandawija. I'll have to find that out. I think it's an import. Absolutely wonderful. Look at that lock. And look at that trim. Ah, there's the grab handle. I was looking for that yesterday. Not a single mark on this slam panel. Fantastic. Lots of aircraft activity today. That's one of the benefits of living in Lincolnshire. I'll open the bonnet and we'll have a look inside. So I've got the bonnet open now and as you can see, just by looking at the tops of these headlights and the stickers that under here is going to be as good. And actually, it needs some fettling. It's not perfect. Things like this need cleaning. This need cleaning. All this needs cleaning. But it's a good, good starter for 10, isn't it? I bet that air filter in there has probably not seen the light of day for 10 years. Look at the top of this rocker cover. It's got all the original grease from when it left the factory on there. That is not something you want to clean off there because you're never going to get that back. Your radiator cap, well, it's just dirty. Clean that, fantastic. It has had a new battery at some point. It's had a 10 year battery look. And for some reason, not a genuine fit one. But under here, absolutely beautiful not a single mark under this boot lid, uh, bonnet lid not a single mark and that isn't rust <laughs> it's just dirt amazing absolutely amazing this it's like a little time warp the original spray grease on the strut top mounts fantastic what am I going to do with it then? That's the question. Well, I'm certainly not going to sell it. I've been looking for one of these for a very long time in this condition. I'm going to get it perfect. And when I say perfect, there's not much more to do. I am going to clean it within an inch of its life. I'm going to put good quality wheel trims on. Hello, Daisy. Good quality wheel trims that are fitting the bill. I've just seen this sticking up. That trim's not fitted properly, but I doubt it's been fitted properly from new. Um, and I'm going to put it back in the garage, and I'm going to enjoy it. Now, John, these cars are meant to be driven. Yeah, absolutely they are. Um, so I am going to drive it. I'm going to take it to shows. It's a perfect contender for the Festival of the Unexceptional in a few years, in my opinion. I'm going to take it to a few shows, I'm going to enjoy it, and I'm going to be a custodian of it. I'm going to be a good custodian of it. What do you think? Am I chasing my tail looking for a good micro, or am I doing the right thing by trying to save one? Let me know in the comments below. It's been a long video, I know, but I just wanted to literally cover every little inch of this car to show you it, because I genuinely think it is perfect. Whatever you're getting up to today, have a great day. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, please do so. If you've liked it, hit the like button. And until next time, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Take care. Goodbye. Hello, you absolute legends. How are you? Welcome back to the channel from a beautiful afternoon here in Lincolnshire. And I'm in my back garden today where we are going to be looking at this 
It's a W30 Mark III Toyota MR2. Um, it is the facelift edition, i.e. it is after 2003. So it has a little few different nuances to the Mark I. And it's one I picked up yesterday. Uh, I saw it for sale on Facebook. It actually belonged to a friend of mine, an acquaintance, somebody that I used to go to school with, who uh, sadly passed away. Um, about 20 months ago due to some complications. So this car was uh, his pride and joy and I saw it on for sale and I contacted his widow who I actually know uh, as well through misspent teenage youth and friends of friends um, and it was nice to see her again but a shame in such sad circumstances. Anyway, we fixed a deal and I ended up giving this MR2 uh, a lovely new home after being sat for about 22 months since uh, his sad passing. So it is a little bit of a bittersweet video, but obviously she was happy that it was going to go to a good home and get a little bit of attention as well because she is aware of the YouTube channel. So what is it then? It's a 2003 Toyota MR2 Mark III. Why is it so special? Well, this is the last of the Toyota MR2s. They didn't make any more after this. This is the last one, and it's the Roadster. It's the Spider in some places, and it is the convertible version. So uh, it's not got a hard top. However, a hard top was an optional extra. The car then uh, is totally stock standard, apart from the wheels, uh, which have been changed to suit the previous owner's um, taste. So uh, the, the gentleman who, who owned it, who I bought it from, uh, the, the gentleman he bought it from previously is the person who put those wheels on. They're not to my taste, however, they sort of go with the car, but I'm not a fan of black wheels on anything. Uh, but we'll talk about wheels later on in the video. Um, it's covered just over 41,500 miles from new. So it's quite low mileage, and it's had four owners before me, with the gentleman who I bought it from buying it in 2018. Registered Oop North, uh, it's a Newcastle car. It came from, uh, I can't remember the dealer, but the details are in the book. It came from a dealership uh, up near Newcastle Way. And uh, in this video then, we'll have an in-depth look at the car have a look around it, have a look at any issues, damage, uh, and talk about something that I have noticed is wrong with the car. <laughs> uh, and then we'll go from there. So at the moment, the car has no MOT. Um, it, it, was, it was brought back to me uh, by a friend of mine on a ramp, uh, on a flatbed, and uh, I obviously have only driven it on private land, and it has no tax, it's currently sawned, and uh, obviously for that reason, it's, uh, it's, it's not been anywhere. Um, it needs an MOT. I had an MOT booked in. More about MOT bookings in in another video later on on the channel. It's finished in this lovely metallic grey colour with colour coded wing mirrors and uh, black vinyl roof and black leather interior. We'll take a look then around the car. You can see that on the front bumper, there's no damage. It's not damaged in any way, shape or form. This here is actually uh, just a little bit of, I don't know what you'd call it, polish. Uh, it's been polished recently before I purchased it. Uh, it was looking beautiful. Uh, and uh, in the, uh, the fog and the dew overnight, that's, uh, that's leaked down off there. Uh, so the front bumper looking good, no major issues on there. One thing I have noticed is the fog lights have sort of, I don't know, got all this stuff inside. Um, I don't know what it is, I don't know if it's some sort of corrosion or whatever, but the plan will be to take those fog lights out and sort of tip all that nonsense out of there. It's done it both sides. But no damage on the front bumper and actually no major stone chips on uh, on anything. The front lights have gone a little bit hazy at the top here. That's something I'm going to obviously address with a headlight restoration kit and some wet and dry and some, uh, some polish. It's a never-ending thing, plastic headlights. Once they start to go, once you start polishing them, you're going to keep polishing them till the end of time. Um, they didn't really suffer with rust 
these Mark III's, unlike the Mark I's and the Mark II's to some degree. So wheel arches looking nice and tidy, no major issues there. And of course we've got these Team Dynamics alloy wheels, which um, again are not to my liking. There's some damage to the tyres um, here and here, and actually someone has put metal uh, valves on here. Uh, valve covers. This one comes off nicely. I do know that the other three do not. They are stuck on. That's an issue that we're going to have to address. And um, if you remember with the uh, Audi, that one. Uh, no, not that one. The other one, the silver one. We had to um, cut those off, so that will be a job for Dad, sadly. Looking down the car, no major dinks or dents. In fact, one of the good things about the car is it hasn't got many dents in it at all. There's a couple, uh, and there's a couple in places where I'm not going to be able to get them popped out, but it's really not the end of the world, and only I will know that they're there. Looking here, then, we've got these mud flaps. Um, I would suggest they need coming off and looking behind because there's some dirt and debris behind there. Um, that's going to be something that we will address. But the sills and the skirts and the sides are all good. There's no issues here. Uh, there's no rust or rot on any of the sills or on the bottom of any of the doors. And the car has been kept, uh, not garaged, but covered during its lifetime. Um, so the passenger door, no major issues here. We have got these aftermarket sort of rubbery bump stops. Um, there's something I'm going to remove. I understand why they're there. It's to stop this corner being damaged, but they're not to my liking. And I actually don't think they go very well on a sporty car. So they're going to come off. They'd look good on your uh, Morris Minor. Maybe not your Minor, but on something uh, a little bit more OAP, shall I say. Uh, but not on on this car. We've got this side intake. This is a plastic piece uh, that goes into the engine bay and we've got the fuel filler cap here. Again looking at the rear wheel arch, no issues, all good, all fine, no blisters or blebs anywhere and uh, all looking good. As you can see that's not going to come off there. That is corroded. That will need cutting off and you can see that the car has been stood for quite a while just by the condition of these brake discs and these brake pads. Brake pads are fine by the way, it's just these brake discs are quite worn uh, and, uh, and dirty I suppose once the car gets running and going that will semi clean itself off but you can see just here on the on the wheel just how much uh, those have been sort of binding and the dust is coming off on, uh, on it being um, I suppose driven and moved about recently. Taking a look at the back, no major issues here and because it is the MR2 it's a mid-engine so this is your engine bay. Your uh, uh, boot is technically at the front. No damage, no issues here. You've got the lovely nice and bright badges. You've got Toyota MR2 Roadster and lots of intakes here on the back and grills as well has been bumped here on this corner in that um lady who owned the car uh gentleman's widow uh bumped it slightly and it's come off a peg here that's not a major issue and if i'm honest it's literally undo a bolt push it back in and screw that back in so i don't see that being a major issue at all it's not damaged anything there's actually no damage to this uh, this bumper it is literally just a, a knock and a pop. Um, I think here is probably where it's scuffed it the most. You can see there's a slight scuff there. Um, but again, wheel arch looking fine. No major issues, no rust. I'm going to run my finger along there. All good. And the tyre on this one looking nice as well. Automatic aerial, fully working that is. I was very surprised by that because they normally fail on these. And uh, we've got this sort of vinyl plastic roof with a glass heated rear screen. And on this roof, it's, I must admit, for the age of the car, it's fantastic. There's no rips, there's no tears, there's no marks. It's absolutely immaculate. So that is a big selling point for the car and a big plus. Looking at this side, there is a slight mark on this door. It's almost as if bird lime, bird poo, has eaten into this paintwork here, something I'm going to try and 
um, get out, but it's uh, eaten quite nastily into that lacquer. But that is uh, a bit of a shame about the car, but not a major issue. Again, looking at these sills here, looking good, looking good, looking good all the way along there to here. We've got automatic window uh, wing mirrors and automatic windows as well. We'll pop the hood down in just a minute's time. One thing I do love is this Made in Japan sticker that is uh, left on from, um, I suppose, the manufacturing process. Front bumper, again, it looks messy, but it's not. It's just a case of that is where there's been some... Um, polish and it's it's ran and it's sort of stuck between the metal and the bumpers with a bit of a wash and I have not washed this car and um, it will come out and this light is one that I've given a little bit of a polish just to see if it comes up okay with some Maguire's plastics and that's probably what's in here as well we will have a look at removing the roof we'll take the roof down and then we'll have a look at the interior so the roof is a manual roof it is not a um, automatic roof, so you do have to pop it open, and you've got to mark, put these little mirrors down first, these sort of things down first. And there's a button here that you press. Ugh, this comes down, and this lever comes out. It's very much like the um, oh, what's the word I want? The MGTF and the MGF as well. So obviously much easier with two of you, but it's just me. <laughs> Inside, we'll have a look, as I say, in just a minute's time. Push this button, pull that down, these pegs come out, we can pull this forward, and then in theory, the roof should retract. And uh, it clips nicely into place. So the roof pushes, folds down, into place. I need to just put a little bit of WD-40 on these hinges, I think, because uh, it's just, just a little bit resilient and then it snaps into place and there is your roof and you can see then with that we can pull forward again these visors and the other one pull it forward and that locks that into place and you will now see that changes the car's dynamic in that the roof is down um, I like the fact that it doesn't need a tonneau cover, that the roof retracts and sort of gives you this wonderful, I don't know what the word is, effect <laughs> on there. So I've got both the doors closed and I've actually just popped the two windows down now so you can see the uh, effect, so to speak, when you've got... Um, the roof down and the windows down and I must admit it does really add to the look of the car it looks a bit naughty doesn't it it looks a bit <laughs> it looks a bit Porsche-esque from the side is that just me what do you think or does it just look like a Toyota MR2 um, right so we've got the roof down let's take a look inside we'll start with the passenger side leather interior which was an optional extra on this you could have had fabric this comes with the monogrammed uh, leather seating no rips or tears to the leather effect seat or the leather seat which is good not much wear either doors um, quite sporty we've got this sort of plastic trim here this grab handle this sort of silver effect here it is like a plastic um, and a tweeter in the door here and a main speaker uh, and then we've obviously got your uh, pushing backwards and forwards on your lock um, we've got passenger airbag here and we've got a glove box here what's in the glove box well some stuff at the moment we've got some leather wipes we've got some locking wheel nut tools and uh, in there actually was all the documentation for the car as well. Here is the pull button for the front. So uh, we've pulled that and you could hopefully hear that release. That is to release the front bonnet and we'll have a look in there in just a moment. Tailored floor mats, these are the original tailored floor mats um, and the seats pull backwards and forwards the usual way. And behind those, if you pull this lever, pops forward is 
your first piece of storage, which is in here. You've got this drop-down storage box. What are you getting in there? Well, not a lot is the honest answer. And here's a little bit of the roof that we have folded in. Here is a like an acrylic um, visor. This folds up. It's a little bit of a design failure, really, because if you've got tall people driving, like me, well... You can't pop that up without having to move your seat forward. So that, in my opinion, is a design flaw. You've got this area here, this area here, uh, where you can put all your bits and pieces, a bit of luggage for the weekend, maybe. But actually, I've got the toolkit in the other side, and there's not much more room in there. We'll put the seat backwards, and it just locks into place. And as you can see, when it's back fully, you can't get that visor open, which is a big shame. That's the passenger side then, and due to the way that the sun is facing, I'll do the bits and pieces in the centre console from the other side so you don't get any shadow. Come around then to the driver's side, then we'll have a look in the front, then we'll have a look at the engine bay, then we'll start her up. Same on this side, same sort of thing. We've got monogrammed MR2 on the mats here. This is sort of in uh, a white fluff, I think, unless it's been put in. Uh, nope, that's sort of, I don't know, what uh, ironed on, maybe, so you wouldn't want to give that too much of a blast. One thing I do like is these sort of stainless steel effect pedals. They're quite cool. Um, and these uh, clip in, but the clip here is broken. In fact, let's clip this one back in. It should clip back in. Come on, in you go. There we go, it clips in like that. Uh, I'll to hold that into place. And that sits under there, so I'll need to just get a new clip for here, but that's not a major issue. Lock and unlock, that stops. Um, you'll be able to unlock the fuel filler cap, which will pull, and the bonnet release, uh, the boot release, which is actually the engine bay release. Whilst you are uh, have got the roof down, so you can lock that, that's with the key. And uh, same again, driver's seat. No major rips or tears. You've got a couple of bits of scuffing here on here. I've actually got some black leather dye, which I'll be treating um, that with, just to hide that little bit of scuffing there. One thing I did notice is these wires. Can you see these wires look going to the seat belt? They're quite tight. I would hate for one of them to break, but that's very tight, that is. Um, window uh, controls are here, automatic up and down. Obviously, they're not going to go at the moment because the key isn't in. Leather handbrake, up and down. Come on, there we go, up and down. And the gear knob as well. This is actually the six-speed version, which is quite rare. Um, in fact, actually, I'm going to be totally honest with you now. I didn't think it was the six-speed edition until I've just looked at this gear knob. Um, I thought this was a five-speed gearbox, which makes this car so much more rarer. <laughs> I didn't realise. That's brilliant. Uh, reverse uh, to the side, and then one, two, three, four, five, and the extra six. That is an absolute billy bonus. Didn't know about that, and that's made me quite happy. In fact, I'm going to show you my happy face. Yes, six speed. <laughs> there you go, got to see my fat face. Um, right, so in here you've got your normal controls, you've got your hazard lights at the top, you've got a digital clock, you've got your recirculation here on the right hand side. No aircon on here, which is absolutely unbelievable considering someone has spec'd this to the nines and not put aircon in. I suppose that was quite expensive. You've got your Toyota CD radio and you've got your uh, six disc radio as well. It's got a six disc changer in here, which is brilliant. Uh, you've also got uh, a trip navigation, computer, bits and pieces, and all sorts of stuff. And here, oh, I thought it was a push. You've got a double cup holder. Yeah, you have for all your cups. Put your double cups in there. And for some reason, you've got another cup holder here. So you can have three cups on the go. Winner, winner. In here, ashtray. It's never been smoked in the car. And let's have a look at the cigarette lighter. Oh, it's been used. It has been used at some point in its life, but um, as far as I'm aware, the car has never been smoked in, so it could have been used for, I don't know, lighting other things. Um, looking at this, we've got your indicators left and right. You've got your light control stalk here, and here is your um, window wipers. And actually, your clocks here are quite busy. You've got your RPM in the center. You've got your speedo off to the left, 
and your everything else to the right. You've got a big thing that says fuel door to the left. Not sure we needed a big thing that said fuel door. You've got your fuel gauge and you've got your temperature as well. Left and right, electronic mirrors. You've got your brightness up and down. This is your fogs. You've got your locking windows to stop people from locking your windows. And you can unlock and lock the car with this here. So let's put that unlock before we end up deadlocking the car. Um, yeah, that's that. Let's take a look at the little cubby hole behind the driver's seat. It's the same as the passenger, but it's got the original toolkit in there. And again, visor issues there. Uh, let's put the key in. You've got a bing bong to say that the key is in. Let's turn the ignition on and I'm going to turn the radio volume down so we don't get cancelled by YouTube, but show you that I've got the automatic aerial popped up. Let's turn the blowers off, save some battery. But yeah, we've got a six disc CD player here as well, which I didn't know about until the other day. Um, I won't start it up yet. We'll start it up in just a minute's time. There is boop, the uh, automatic radio. We will look in the boot or the front first and foremost. And this is where I wonder how to do this. Here we go. Uh, this is under the front. MR, Midship Runabout, which is what it stands for. I will put this peg in and then we'll have a look under here. And under here, it's mainly quite plasticky. Scrivets held in place. There's one missing here, but that's not a major issue. And under here is your little cubby hole area. And actually in here, you've got a uh, spare wheel. It's the Space Saver wheel. It's got its original jacket on as well which will say Toyota on, which is nice. That's all in place. There's not much space in there if you uh, want anything else, is there? Washer bottle, brake fluid, fuses. Not much under there, is there? I think Toyota probably could have done something a little bit better with this, but um, I do like this midship runabout. That's a cool little thing. Cool little feature that. Now to look at the engine bay. This is where the magic happens. Again, I'm going to have to open the lid. And on my Mark 1, because uh, it's an early import, the holder is on the left hand side, but on this it's on the right hand side. So I'll uh, put the bonnet prop in and we'll have a look under here. Halford's battery that is absolutely cream crackered, it's no good. So at the moment I'm going to have to jump start the car off to uh, start it up. We've got a little VIN plate here, information plate. Um, we've got the VVTi 16 valve engine here. And there's your dipstick. Some would argue he's behind the camera. And there's not really that much going on under here. You've got your air box here uh, into your engine. You've got your drive belts and your exhaust is under this cover here, this blanking plate. Has got an aftermarket exhaust. And uh, let's talk about the exhaust. It's blowing. Um, we don't know why. I don't know why. Dad's going to have a look at it. He's going to see what the issue is before we uh, send the car for MOT because it won't pass an MOT currently in the uh, state that it's in with the exhaust blowing. I think that it's probably just not been fitted right. Again, aftermarket exhaust. It's not the end of the world, um, but it's something we can fix. And then you've got your coolant bottle here. Uh, last thing then, I will start the car up. You can hear it running. And that will be the end of the video. I'm going to have to get my jump pack, as I say, because uh, the battery is totally flat. Jump pack's on. It's in place. I'm going to just lay it down a little bit so it's not uh, rattling about when I start the engine. And I'll just start it from being in out the outside. Make sure we're out of cog, which we are. And you can hear already <laughs> just how throaty that is. Take my jump back off. Put it to the side. And I'll let you listen to that engine. No idea where that blow's coming from. It is quite a bad uh, exhaust blow. 
but am I panicking about that? No, I've got a Toyota MR2 with 41 and a half thousand miles on the clock. What did I pay for it? Well, I'm not gonna tell you uh, out of respect. However, it was a lot less than I think you're probably expecting. Um, if you were to double the number, you would have 3,000 pounds. Let's put it that way. There it is then. Mark III Toyota MR2 W30 purring away semi-okay <laughs> because it does need a little bit of TLC long term is it going to stay in the fleet well no is the honest answer um, it's not something I can keep but it is something I wanted to rescue and have a little bit of a summer blast with because it's the sort of thing that I've always wanted to have one and I've always wanted to scratch that itch so I'm going to put the proper alloy wheels on it I do have those now, I've bought a set, more about that later. I'm going to get it nice and tidied up, put things back that are missing, such as that scrivet and the back bumper that's hanging off a little bit, get it MOT'd, maybe enjoy it for a couple of months and offer it to a loving new home. But I think it's an absolute credit, and an absolute beauty, and I am proud to say that at the moment it's mine. Have a great day, whatever you're getting up to. If you've enjoyed the video, let me know. It's a long one, I can only apologise because there was a lot I wanted to cover. Maybe in one of the videos I'll be taking it for an MOT and uh, getting it tested and getting the uh, exhaust back on properly. Have a great day, whatever you're getting up to. You are all absolute legends. Thanks to everyone who's followed the channel so far. Take care. Goodbye. Hello, you absolute legends. Welcome back to the channel. It's John here. Thanks for joining me. And today, well, we're going to be taking a look at this. It's my brand new purchase, brand new addition to the collection. And it's something that I have been wanting for quite some time now. It's a 2000 plate Rover 75. It's a 1.8 Cowley build car. It's a really early model. Um, it is the one with the petrol K series engine and we'll talk about that in just a moment's time There's going to be so much content coming to the channel about this car in the next few weeks However, I've just been and picked it up There are a few niggles that we need to talk about and a major drama that I also need to discuss as well But in this video, let's take a look around the car We'll talk about the features, we'll talk about its history And also we'll uh, check out things that we need to do and also some good things about the car well, it's a windy old day here in Lincolnshire, as you can probably hear, but let's take a look at this car then. As you heard in the introduction, it is a 1.8, it is a petrol, and it is a Cowley built car. It's an early Rover 75 then. John, why have I, you bought a Rover 75? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, my dad used to work for a Rover garage back in the day. In fact, he was a Rover mechanic for 30 odd years. And I remember on the launch of the Rover 75, seeing this car in Wedgwood blue with all the chrome detailing down the side and me as a 12 year old boy thinking wow that looks like an absolute machine like it looked like a spaceship to me and I'd never seen anything like it I knew that dad worked on cars obviously but he'd brought things home like minis he'd brought things home like Austin Montegos and when this arrived outside our semi-detached house in sort of 1999 I thought it was an absolute machine and I remember getting into it leather interior first time I'd seen a leather interior car and it was I think it was a connoisseur or a connoisseur SE that he brought home and I can remember it specifically having the chrome trim and the chrome window uh, mirrors and it was oh it was a beautiful thing so this uh, popped up I was contacted by the owner who said John I've got a Wedgwood Blue and uh, it belonged to an elderly gentleman in the family who, uh, who, who has given up the driving uh, and uh, I'd like it to go to a good home. And so obviously <laughs> he decided that I was uh, a good home. The car was bought uh, in Lancashire near Preston, new by the owner, Mr Cowley of all people back in April 2000 and has uh, been in his possession 
ever since. And it really is an absolutely beautiful thing. Let's show you around the car then. We'll have a look at some of the niggles because if you do follow me on Twitter, you will know that, well, we had some issues on the way home and uh, we'll, we'll have a look at what we're gonna do with the car and talk about it as well. It is in fantastic condition. Let's have a look then. So we've got the wonderful blue, Wedgwood blue bonnet and wing there. There is a slight knock here where someone has touched it in with paint. But apart from that, that's the only damage to the paint that I can see on this car. Uh, the paintwork needs a blooming good scrub and you can see that uh, part of the process will be me giving it a good old clean. But the arches, look at these wing arches. They're fantastic. There's no rust, there's no rot. There's no damage to any of those arches. Let's have a quick look in there. You can see all in the wheel arch is nice. And uh, actually I'm very surprised by the condition of the alloy wheels. There's a little bit of, I don't know if it's road dirt or what on there. I don't think they're damaged. I think they're just dirty. They're certainly not corroded. And look at these center caps. They are, they're okay. They're gonna come up nicely. I think they're a bit oily, but I think they're gonna come up lovely. Early built Cowley cars then, which means that you've got a lovely uh, black sill and it's a pre-project drive edition as well. We'll talk about the project drive later on in the video, but the sills are fine. There's no rust or rot on any of the sills. There's a little bit of a blister right under there, uh, but uh, apart from that, no major issues. And people will say that these Rover 75s rotted for fun. Yeah, once the rust got hold, they certainly did. Look at all this chrome though. It's a little bit dirty and I'll be getting the jet wash carefully out later on. But uh, there is the wing mirror and this window as well. But looking at that sill and that bodywork, it's straight as a die. Let's take a look at this rear wheel arch. You can see here, it's nice and tidy. And as far as I'm aware, this car's never had any paintwork. I don't think it's had any paintwork. Um, and it's clearly been loved and cherished by the original owner in its lifetime. Pre-project drive again, which meant that you look at this C-pillar badge. You've got this lovely Rover C-pillar badge. And there's absolutely no damage, as far as I can see, to any of the chrome trim uh, on the car. We've got all original glass, all the way around, heated rear screen. No dealer sticker. The dealer sticker has either been removed or never been put in the car. Um, I'll be replacing that at some point in the future. Let's have a look at this back bumper then. Lovely. And if you look at the MOT history of the car, you'll see that uh, there have been MOT histories where the number plates have let it down. And you can see that somebody has just been to, well, those that shall not be named and bought some just number plates to whack on the back of it. Um, I will be getting the genuine Rover Fit rear number plate. Um, and look at that, I can't wait to give that a good old clean in there. <laughs> look at that badge, look how filthy it is. We'll be getting in there later this afternoon. Again, because it's a pre-project drive car, um, it has the badge on the boot lid there and not on the chrome trim. Let's take a look under here. I think it's probably got the original exhaust, yeah, the exhaust is a little bit crusty, but it isn't blowing, it's not blowing at all. Come across to this side then, rear lights, they tend to leak, there's a little bit of a water ingress in here, and you can see that it's been growing in there, I might get, uh, get something in there and hopefully try and blast some of that out, but that might be a new rear light job if I want to make it perfect. Fuel filler cap, well, it's open at the moment. I always think you can tell a car's history by looking inside the fuel filler cap. This doesn't look original to me. It should say, oh, oh no. Uh, <laughs> I think the fuel filler cap's been replaced at some point in its life. Um, but that is uh, all nice. There, the roof, I'm just gonna show you the roof. No dents, no dents on there. There are a couple of car park knocks here and there, but nothing that a paintless dent removal will not be able to sort in 20 minutes or so. Let's look at this wheel arch then. All good. This is, of course, plastic. Uh, 
this wheel arch there's a slight rub there tiny little rub don't know what's happened there someone's probably been polishing it through but no rust there and onto there there's a tiny 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 rust spot just surface there but again hello wheels looking okay this one has started to crumble just a little bit there uh, and the tires well the tires could do with being replaced probably before the next mot again all original glass rover splint x the glass has got quite a few scratches in i don't know if you can see that scratch there the car has lived nearby the seaside uh, as in it's been in lancashire it's been in preston which is quite close to the blackpool and the sea there isn't it so that could be an issue has there been grit or sand in there i don't know um i certainly am not going to be polishing glass it does let it down a little bit how can you fix it well get some new glass i suppose but then you lose the originality of the car let's take a look at this sill here again no major issues on that sill the door's looking lovely in that wedgewood blue one thing i have noticed is the automatic uh, wing mirror adjusters don't seem to work it's probably one of the motors have seized up or maybe get a bit of lube in there bulldog pdx and that'll free that up nicely again just needs a good old scrub here and there but all good in there let's have a look in there springs a little bit crusty but doesn't look broken and again this alloy wheel looking nice that's the exterior of the car we will move around into the interior in just a moment's time We'll open up the engine bay, we'll open up the uh, rear of the car, the boot, and then we will talk about its future and about the problems I had on the way home. Because you guessed it, it's a K-series engine, it's a 1.8. Did the head gasket blow on the way home? <laughs> you betcha it did. Uh, right, this is the club model, which means that it's not the bottom spec, but it's nowhere near the top spec. Um, inside you don't get leather seats instead you get there we go uh, you get velour interior and the camera makes the velour interior look a lot dirtier than it actually is um, it needs a good old scrub and things like the headrests need a good clean but the interior there's no rips there's no tears there's a little bit of wear for the driver's bolster here but nothing i'm panicking about and all this plastic in here that's a little bit dirty well you get yourself an afternoon with a sponge and a mop and a bucket and that's the sort of thing that will clean up beautifully let's take a look at this uh, kick panel here again needs a good clean but there's not major damage to any of this this lovely rover chrome kick panel one thing that i will say about the car which i don't understand is that it's not got any floor mats in and it doesn't appear to have ever had any floor mats in which for somebody who clearly loved their car so much i'm surprised that they didn't have floor mats oh that's useful that's come off on my way home <laughs> that's the um clutch pedal there let's pop the bonnet while we're here bonnet pull is there pop the boot as well electric boot and um, we've got electric windows here which if i was to put the ignition on and turn the, big one. the engine off not the engine off the uh, blowers off and the radio off uh you will see that these all work i'm not going to put it all the way down in case there is still some grit in there but again passenger side there goes the window and all the rear all the electrics work basically is what i'm trying to say um all the uh windows working nicely Fifty-seven thousand nine hundred and eighty-six miles on the clock uh, it is a uh, low mileage vehicle there's the horn and you've got this lovely rover center badge in the middle there uh the steering wheel needs a good old clean one thing i will say about the interior is, is there's no damage it just needs a good scrub um the door card trims here have started to go just a little bit i'm, I'm, I'm trying to find a way of fixing that there must be a way that i can fix that without having to re trim the uh, the door cards uh, no sunroof in this model which is an absolute bonus and this wacky interior light look at that how fantastic is that center console we've got climate control air conditioning the air conditioning doesn't work uh, and we've got a cd cassette deck there analog clock in the middle and look at this wonderful 
uh, proper wood dash. That's nice. Uh, we've got, what's that? That's the 12 volt adapter. And here is a uh, cup holder, which doesn't ping out properly. You need to give it a bit of a force, but look at that. <laughs> You've got a proper cup holder there. I need to give that a little bit of a, a little bit of TLC, I think, just to get that popping back out again. Nothing here, that's a blanking plate. And you've got the, uh, I don't know, ashtray there as well. Ooh. And we've got a leather console top here. I've not, I've not actually looked inside here. What's in here? Oh, somewhere to put your cassettes and your bits and pieces and your pound coins. Um, fine, not an issue. Uh, apart from that, nothing exciting really in the driver's side. Here, let's go around to the passenger side. In the rear there, you've got electric mirrors, get electric windows, big pardon, not mirrors, uh, and the lovely plush velour interior. Now there's evidence here that there has been mats in the back, but the mats have not come with the car. Got a fold down rest there, and then in the middle here, somewhere to put your pen, your business cards, and your cups as well. I love this, and you can actually get ski shoots for some of these, but it's not something I'll be adding. Uh, rear, um, what's the word I want? Climate control here. You've got a rear ashtray as well. Have I broken that now? Probably. Nope, you've just got to push the button back in. Um, and one thing I do want to show you, if that camera does that, you've got rear cup holders. So you've got four cup holders here. All the cup holders, one, two, and then the two in the middle. Headlining is looking good, by the way. Uh, looking all fine. No major issues with the headlining there. Um, these seats do not fold down, as far as I'm aware. It is just the uh, saloon version. And again, the door card's looking good with rear speakers here for the uh, passengers. Right, let's go into... Oh, that was a bit tight. That clearly needs some TLC in there. Uh, clearly, it's not had any passengers in the rear for a very long time. Let's open the boot then. Again, I don't like this. This is this is upsetting me. I'm going to have to get that sorted. Massive boot space in here. Absolutely mega boot space with this lift-up system here. And did you know? Put that on there. Holds that in place when you're in the boot here. This is one of my favourite things. The toolkit is still sealed. <laughs> Aside from the locking wheel nut tool, the toolkit has still got its polythene on, and we've still got the original space saver wheel there as well. But the fact that the toolkit's never been opened, to me, it's quite a good thing. Um, there's a little bit of like surface marking here. It's not rust, it's just dirt where there's a bit of water that's got in, because these do tend to leak. Uh, but uh, there's no evidence of leaking in here. This is all nice and dry under there. So as far as I'm aware, no leaks from the tail lights. And uh, there is the, uh, is the boot lid trim, looking nice and fresh. Should be a grab handle to slam it, but there isn't. So I'll just carefully drop that down. Passenger side, near side rear very much much of a muchness there's a bit of damage here to this kick plate clearly someone's trapped something in the door i'm assuming the seat belt in the past uh, but looking fine in there leg room is okay when you've got somebody that's sort of five foot nine in the front but not great if you're six foot three and a driver and then passenger side front what have we got? We've got adjustable seats. We've got side airbags as well. Back and forth on these. You can go up and down with the uh, drivers, but you can't go up and down with the um, with the passengers. And you've got this little sort of cubby hole area here where you can put your bits and pieces in. Nice non-slip there. Airbag vents. I'm just going to shut that vent. And then your glove box. What's that in the glove box there? Ah, something is broken off somewhere. That looks like a visor cover. Is it going to be as part of these visors? One of the covers? Yeah, that's a visor cover there uh, with lights. So I'm assuming the one on the driver's side is probably broken. Let's take a look under the bonnet. It is a hydraulic bonnet stays on this. 
and you open the bonnet, come on, <laughs> by this little uh, machine here, this little lever here. Uh, it's difficult to do one-handed. There we go. Ooh. And you can see that lovely Rover 1.8 K-Series engine. And of course I say lovely because, well, it's got a problem. Can you see the problem? Yes, the head gasket has blown. Um, I did all the checks when I picked the car up. There was no oil in the coolant cap. There was no uh, issue with creaminess on the dipstick. No mayo, as people would say. Um, I think at some point this coolant cap has failed. Uh, fine, not an issue. Get a new one of those, but you can see inside the coolant reservoir no evidence of K-seal or oil or anything like that. So fingers crossed I've caught the head gasket as it's failed before it's caused any major damage. The engine bay needs a blooming good clean you can see you've got oil residue here and here and just bits and pieces from over the years gonna get some cleaner on there but there it is the 1.8 16 valve k series engine lump which uh, i'm gonna have to replace the head gasket on <laughs> i say me dad but we're gonna upgrade it um Looking at the history of the car, looking at the ownership of the car, one owner, there's no evidence that the head gasket has ever been done. So to last 50 odd thousand miles without blowing, I think that is something that was inevitably going to need to be done anyway. And whilst we're there, we'll be doing the cam belt as well. Um, that's really it from the walk around. I... Uh, I'm going to shut this engine bay. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to start the engine up, but not run it for long because obviously there's a head gasket issue. Uh, all the keys, by the way, we've got loads of keys. Uh, we've got one, two, and the emergency key. Can you see that? That's great to have. Let's start it up. We'll listen to it quick. Make sure it's out of gear. Make sure it's not going to fall over. Start it up and let you listen to that K series tick over a little bit. <laughs> with that head gasket fault. And it's not too bad when you squeeze the hoses. It's not pouring water out. But you can just see on the block down there, which I can't get my camera into, that there is a leak from that head gasket. That's it then. That is the tour of the Rover 75 1.8. And I hope you enjoyed that video as much as I enjoyed making it. And you now understand the reasons why I just had to save it. There's going to be so much content coming to the channel, including the rebuild of that head gasket um, and me making it a little bit more coupland desk, putting it back to how it should be original dealer plates, dealer stickers, and giving it a Blooming good scrub, that's what I need, uh, need to say. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, thumbs up please. It really uh, is great to, to get your commentary and your comments. And uh, if you do hit the like button, it helps YouTube find my videos and help people like you um, promote them. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. I absolutely love making these videos and doing what I'm doing. And uh, your subscriptions really help. And if you haven't already, drop a comment in the box below. What do you reckon? Am I bonkers to take on something like a K-Series Rover 75 that's 23 odd years old? Or uh, am I doing the right thing by keeping these lovely bits of British engineering on the road? Have a great day, whatever you're getting up to. Take care. Thanks for watching. And as ever, humbled by all your support. Thank you. Goodbye. If you've enjoyed this video, I've selected a few more specially for you on this page. Click either side to select them now. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button to always stay up to date with the channel.